This special edition of College Football Saturday is presented by Suzuki. Quad Fair 2008 is here. Get the best deals and lowest financing of the year on Suzuki's full line of performance-driven ATVs. Visit your local dealer today. And brought to you in part by Jack in the Box. We don't make it until you order it. And by College Colors Day 2008, Friday, August 29th. Wear your college color colors wherever you are. Visit collegecolorsday.com. The Baylor Bears take the field and kick off the 2008 campaign after a 3-9, 0-8 Big 12 season a year ago. And here is Wake Forest from the ACC. They are ready to roll. Let's go down to Jim Knox with the Baylor head coach, Art Riles. Coach, you got three good quarterbacks. Publicly, you haven't named a starter until tonight. Who's it going to be and why? Uh, Kirby Freeman is going to start. And it's, you know, it's just because, like I told him, you know, somewhere, somewhere along the line in life, somebody's going to give you an opportunity maybe 30 years from now. He just got his tonight. You know, and you need to be thankful. You need to be ready when those opportunities come. So we have a lot of confidence in him. Robert's going to play some early, but, you know, Kirby, I'm, I'm proud of the journey he's had, and hopefully he'll have a great evening. All right. Good luck, Coach. Appreciate it. Kirby Freeman gets a start, guys. All right, thank you very much. And uh, Art Bryles, you can see the enthusiasm that he brings, and he's hoping that that with hard work and discipline will pay off in what's going to be a tough opening season for him here on the Brazos. And tonight's weather, talk about tough, 94 game time, 37% humidity, no rain in the forecast as Baylor and Wake Forest are ready to kick it off. This is the fifth time that these two schools have met. Baylor leads the series 4-0. Three meetings in Waco. The last was way back in 1961. The first, you see the Dixie Bowl down in Birmingham. That was January 1, actually 1949. And the kickoff by Swank in the end zone. It'll be down there, and it'll be first to 10 for the Baylor Bears. And their quarterback, Kirby Freeman. 6'3", 210, a senior by listing, but has actually already graduated and took advantage of that special NCAA rule in transferring from Miami, was here for the spring out of Brownwood, Texas, experienced, and he actually has played against Wake Forest before in his days at Miami. Yeah, and I think Coach Browse is just going with the experienced player, guy who's got uh, game experience in the ACC. He knows this football team, Wake Forest, and might have a special night as Coach Browse hopes. Fakes the run, the pass to Geddes. Hit hard at the 22-yard line, and it'll be second in about eight. Liberty Mutual gives you our starting lineup tonight as we take a look at the Baylor offensive line. The veterans up front, a key, Jason Smith, an honorable mention all-conference pick. The backs and receivers, you just saw Geddes, a speedster, 35 receptions last year. Ryan, who in five years at Houston, 34 and 28, his first game here at Baylor. Freeman in trouble and scrambling, and will throw it away on the Wake Forest sideline. Liberty Mutual provides us now with a look at the Wake Forest defense, and this is a defense that at Winston Salem they're saying might be their best ever. A pair of Robinsons, Matt, a guy to watch, a six-year senior, saw injury, won the Brian Piccolo Courage Award. Linebackers are all great. Aaron Curry, the best of the bunch, turned down the NFL. And Alfonso Smith, eight interceptions last year, 14 in his career, tops among all active NCAA football players in D1. Yeah, and this is where it's critical for Baylor. Play well on third down, but if it's not there, it's okay to punt the football. They're going to make good decisions with it. Got a good speech for down there now. Just overthrows Geddes, who can get behind the defense. That was a third and eight. He was covered by Kenny Major, a senior, 5'11", 180-pounder. Well, that's not a bad start there for Kirby Freeman to get his career started here with Baylor. And Art Browles, his, uh, his regime is underway, but the first series out the gate. They go three downs and punt. Now the defense has a chance to go out there. And got a unique formation here punt-wise. Alfonso Smith is deep to return. And Derek Epperson, a sophomore from South Lake Texas Keller High School. Mm. And he shanks it a bit. And it goes out of bounds over the Baylor sideline. We'll see where they mark it. Not what Art Bryles wanted on a three and out with just 44 seconds. And then a poor punt to boot. 
On the other side, let's take a look now at Wake Forest and the veteran Riley Skidder as he brings his club 61205, a junior from Jacksonville, Florida. We showed you in the opening comments his 72% passing efficiency last year as far as completion rate for 2,204 yards. They would like him to reduce the interception. Sometimes sure. they say he's got a little greedy. And Jim Grove has just said, hey, just play within yourself and it'll be fine, particularly with the defense that they have. A 14-yard kick, and it's first and 10 at the 36 of Baylor for Wake Forest. And the completion as Wooster makes the grab. Liberty Mutual brings us the Wake Forest offense. How about the center, Trey Bailey? Big job replacing the All-American Steve Justice, who is gone. The backs and receivers, Josh Adams, the ACC Rookie of the Year, with 953 yards rushing in 07. Sets here. Second and four. Right up the middle. And Adams, a tough bring down, has a first down at the 25 yard line as Liberty Mutual gives us the Baylor defense. We start with the D line Rose, Brian, and Lamb, returning starters. Lamb, an honorable mention, all conference selection. The linebackers are led by the man in the middle, Joe Pavelli. 187 tackles in his first two years here. And in the secondary, Jordan Lake. All-conference first teamer, 120 tackles last year, and a legit Thorpe Award candidate this year. First and ten, and again they go to Adams. And Bill, what you're seeing early here from Wake Forest is exactly what Jim Grove would like to do, and that just manage the football game with Riley Skinner, an accomplished quarterback, a smart young man under center. Just take what the defense gives you. They'll run the football between the tackles. Offensive system similar to what they run in the Big 12. A lot of the teams have the same style of spread offense. And the communication, we'll talk about that tonight. I think communication with the new 40-second clock rule between plays here is going to be key. You see no huddle here for Jim Grobe and the, and the Demon Deacons. Grobe telling us you almost have to go no huddle these days with that new clock situation in the game. Good coverage by Baylor defensively here as Adams out of the backfield is forced out of bounds. And Dwayne Crawford covering. It would be a big bonus for Baylor, Gary, if they could come out of this situation forcing a field goal attempt. Yeah, that would be a great series for the Bears to turn around defensively after giving a great field position off a poor punt. Only 10 yards net on the punt, so Wake Forest with great field position get their first first down, but brings up a key third down here for Baylor. Third and 11, the ball at the 26, opening possession for the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. Belt got in motion and the resets to the left of the quarterback Skinner. Skinner set to throw. Plenty of time and complete. Rick Belt brought down and the Baylor crowd gets in and supports their bare defense as he was tackled near the 23-yard line by Joe Pavelic, the junior out of San Antonio, that played at Smithson Valley High School in the suburbs there. Well, just a smart play here by Skinner. He re reads the defense, then you see the fullback coming out of there. Just comes down, takes a nice downhill, easy throw to Belton, and just gets a few yards, but they bring on a pretty accomplished field goal kicker here, Bill. And a 40-yard attempt for Sam Swank, the senior from Jacksonville Beach, Florida, the career active number one field goal man in the country with 60 made in his career. His 40-yarder is good. So Swank takes advantage of the short field position and Wake Forest is on top after its opening possession, 3-0 over Baylor on College Football Saturday, a special Thursday night edition. Swank's 40-yard field goal to Wake Forest, the 23rd ranked team in the nation in the preseason rankings, according to the AP, with an early 3-0 lead here in Waco. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, Jim Knox with you on College Football Saturday, this special Thursday night edition. And Wake Forest will kick it off here. The deep men will be T.J. Scranton, the junior for Baylor, and also Jake Lamar. As Wake, 12-19 to go in the first quarter. Club that went nine and four last year, five and three in the ACC. Ranked for the first time in the preseason. This one booms again. Scranton looks it over. Lamar tells him to down it. What about Baylor and trying to turn things around with her first year head coach, Art Bryles? He talked about what it's going to take. 
we have a lot of faith, hope, and we're going to give a lot of effort and with a great attitude. So when you combine those intangibles, you got a chance. So we, we just jumped in there. We believe that we belong. You know, we're a member of the Big 12 South. We want to be a player in the Big 12 South. We want to be recognized as a quality football team that has respect. You know, when they say better football, I want somebody to turn their head and, and look at us with respect. Gary, he told us yesterday, he said, you know, I'm not sure people do respect us now. He goes, why would they? What have we done? We wants, have to earn that. He wants the faith, the hope, the effort, and the attitude. All those things need to come together. you got to gain that, earn that respect. And he knows that right out of, out of the shoot here. He's got to do something with this football team demonstratively, offensively, to make them have a system that works and play some good defense as well. Jay Finley carrying the football that time as Finley picks up three. Our Suzuki scoring drive, just six plays, 13 yards installed, but Swank connects with 40 yards out, making it good. And that came after they stopped Baylor on the first possession and then a poor punt to give him great field position. Freeman. Knocked nice away. Look nice at break. Gettis, and right there was Alfonso Smith. Yeah, don't be surprised about that. Alfonso Smith, one of the best in the business. Now for, for Baylor tonight, you know what they've got to do, Bill, they've got to get things going here. I think they've got to establish his team identity. What's it going to be like under Art Browse? Who's going to be the leaders? Quarterback play needs to be efficient. I don't think you need to be a superstar out there. Just get things, throw to the right guy and hand it off well. An excellent tackling defense. And you've got to come up and strike people, make something happen when you get there. They bring Ray Sims into the lineup now to the backfield. Sims, one of the many converted quarterbacks. They have 10 former quarterbacks, either junior college or high school, that are other positions here for Baylor's. Really scrambling to get all the best athletes on the field. Going deep, and again, Alfonso Smith had that one blanketed, intended for Kendall Wright, a yeah. freshman out of Pittsburgh, Texas. Now, I'm not sure that was a great read by Kirby Freeman, just throwing it down there. He's got two defenders behind. Nothing's getting deep on this Wake Forest defense early, so that was the ball he just threw up there trying to get a, a receiver under it, but uh, overthrew everyone. So two, another three and out. Exactly, two series there for Baylor offensively, and a good job responding by the Demon Deacons on defense. Once again, Alfonso Smith is deep. Jim Grobe telling us the guy's one of the best kick blockers in the country, but we're going to try him returning because he's taken interceptions back for touchdowns and so many other things. They're going to let him work on this end now. A little better effort punting the football yeah. there. At least he kind of flipped the field, got on the Wake Forest side of the field. Epperson takes care of business this time. Wake will be on offense when we come back. Welcome back to Waco. This week, college football Saturday presented by Acura returns with a doubleheader. First, Oklahoma State takes on Washington State, a non-conference opener for both teams, and then Washington faces 20th ranked Oregon in a Pac-10 showdown. Coverage begins with college football kickoff show Saturday at 3 Eastern, 12 Pacific in high definition. Wake Forest with a 3-0 lead, second possession, and after a 39-yard punt from Epperson, Wake will get the football first and 10 on the 38-yard line, their own 38 this time, with 11.23 to go in the first quarter. Get the signal to start it up, and Riley Skinner calling the shots. He's got Adams behind him in the backfield. We'll see some of a redshirt freshman Pendergrass as well today. And the carry stopped at the 40-yard line. What about Wake Forest and their keys? Well, I think they got to keep it very simple, and it's really all about Riley, and he's just got to hand the ball off, be smart out there, and the defense, tremendous job last year scoring points on defense. So many turnovers, so many touchdowns. It's been fun to watch for those guys, and they've got depth, Bill. They've got experience, and then you use that quality depth in this ball game to get some more depth and also throughout the season. Jim Grubb's done a great job of getting his players ready to play. Second and eight after the two-yard run by Adams. Skinner in big-time trouble. He throws it away. Gary, a lot of rule changes. The most major one is the clock in the 40-second clock, and, and you think it's one of the biggest to ever come along. I really do. I think it's going to be a huge factor in ball games. How do offenses deal with it? It's an administration thing by the officials. When the play is dead, whenever the guy ball goes out of bounds, that's when the 40-second clock starts. How will teams get their plays in, in, in on the field? The game clock is going to stop and go to 25 seconds, and it will start on the referee signal on a ball out of bounds, those kinds of things. 
So there's a lot of differences here. Seeing how teams are going to manage it early in the ball in the season is going to be uh, interesting to watch. Third and eight for Skinner. And he completes this one out of bounds at the 45 with a first down. Marshall Williams, a sophomore from Durham, North Carolina. Chris Burke covering for the Bears, a sophomore out of Mesquite, Texas. Again, a no huddle here from Wake Forest. They come out and get the ball outside to Williams. Nice, accurate throw there by Riley Skinner. Gets it out there for a first down. Defenses are going to be able, not going to be able to substitute as well, Bill, I feel, with the way the offenses are, are going to operate. I think it's going to help the offenses perform. It's just going to be a reaction thing by the defense to see if they can get the right personnel matchups. 15-yard gain on that last play. This time the handoff up the middle on the ground game for the Demon Deacons. And Joe Pavelic, the middle linebacker, making the stop again on Adams. You know, Jim Grobel, yeah, Jim Grobel will tell you that, you know, everything starts and it starts up front. This offensive line, this group up here is very experienced, very balanced. You bring Trey Bailey in, who's replacing an All-American center. So that's the biggest question mark, what's going to happen with the offensive front. But if they play well, Riley Skinner and company, they've got enough talent to perhaps contend for the ACC title once again. Yeah, it, uh, it is not a fluke. They proved that last year after going to the Orange Bowl the year before. This one complete, that'll move the chains again as he goes right back to Marshall Williams and Jordan Lake, the free safety, making the tackle. And you see here on the bottom of the screen here, as soon as that ball was out of bounds and it was thrown, then they're going to bring it back here. They're going to put the ball in play. It's going to be 25 seconds. As soon as the ball is spotted, should be counting down here as soon as the referee counts it to play. And no huddle here by Jim Grobe's offense. So they're kind of trying to pick up the pace. Give him nine yards on the play. And they get the handoff this time on the end around, and Bolden is brought down. He has game-breaking ability, a senior, six foot two twenty. DJ Bolden, Crawford making the tackle for Baylor that time, but Wake Forest, after an opening drive stalled and getting a field goal from Swank, knocking on the door again. They're in field goal range right now. Yeah, up tempo again. We can't even get replays in. Just going so fast here for Jim Grobe and his football team, keeping that same personnel on the field and just taking it at Baylor here. Little run game here. And a second and two, Adams stopped by Antonio Jones. And there again, when you talk about this play clock system, a veteran team that can adjust much quicker to this and control the tempo of the game. Yeah, by contrast, Jim Grope's football team last year, how they play, traditional huddle. They were huddling 95% of the time last season, unless there's a no huddle situation in a two minute drill. Today, you're seeing the new evo evolution of, of the uh, Demon Deacon offense. And I think you'll see this across college football this season. Skinner on a first and 10. Dumps it off across the middle, a short gain across the 20 down to the 19-yard line. Holden making the grab, Jones on the tackle. Now, simple little throw here to the outside. You got your big fullback coming in there and just decides to throw to the inside receiver. Holden, nice grab getting inside. Bears not playing aggressive man coverage up front. They're kind of getting back in zone coverage. At some point, they're going to have to press the action here, try to make a play on the football. We talk about their experience, but Bolden is the only senior offensive starter. That's the juniors for the most part. Bolden here out in the flat. Today's college football is try to get people to open space and get one-on-one -on -one coverage. He couldn't get away that time from Jordan Lake. Yeah, 220 pound or two on the outside. So he's got some size and he can bring it to, to these defensive backs, but decent job reacting there. Again, another key third down here for the Baylor defense. Third and two, maybe a long, long two, maybe three yards. So. They can again try to turn back Wake Forest with a field goal attempt to be another good stop here in a decent series for the Bears. There you see Skinner so far, very conservative, but very accurate. But seven of eight, third and two at the 16 of Baylor. Adams breaks through and is very close to the first down. We'll see where they spot the football as Pavelli got him with the tackle. Looked like he might take it to the house. Good group personnel there, good change up. Steve Lobotsky, the offensive coordinator, doing a good job changing things up there. Coach Lobo and likes to utilize different personnel. And take a look at Josh Adams and what he was able to accomplish last season, being the rookie of the, of the year in the ACC. Tremendous effort there, 950 plus yards as a freshman. And Wake Forest see freshman records in all those categories. Got the first down at the 13. And again, they keep it on the ground as Skinner Adds it off to Adams, and they're giving Adams a lot of carries, but Coach Grove told us, hey, you're going to see Brandon Pendergrass sometime tonight, and they like the excitement that freshman brings to the game. Yeah, and you're seeing here a little defense here, changing personnel. Brian Norwood, the new defensive coordinator for 
for Baylor. Came down from Penn State, Joe Paterno's staff trying to get some personnel on the field, rolling guys through there. We talked about the heat. It's going to be important to get fresh players on the field with the defense. Yeah, this drive, four minutes plus now for Wake Forest. And Skinner, pump fake, goes across the middle, and he's got a touchdown pass. Wake Forest has Burt beaten on the play and the touchdown for the Demon Deacons. Brinkman with a reception for the TD and the first touchdown of the season for Wake Forest. But what about the poise by Riley Skinner, number 11, the quarterback for the for, for Wake Forest. Has a rusher coming on his face and watch the good throw inside there. That's a nice catch there on the outside by Brinkman coming underneath. But the patience that Riley Skinner showed there with a the pressure in his face, pumped the ball, comes underneath the guy who jumps. You can see who the rusher was. Gave him a chance for the score. And the point after by Swank, and it's 10-0 as Brinkman gets his first reception of the season. It's a TD, Skinner to Brinkman. Deacons 10, Bears zip. Welcome back. Big 12 College Football Saturday special Thursday night edition and Wake Forest living up to that 23 national ranking with his TD pass. Watch the pump there, Roddy Skinner gets Antonio Johnson to jump and a nice throw inside there to Chip Brinkman. Nice easy throw and catch there, but the poise by Riley Skinner, the junior, the very experienced quarterback, made it look easy. Brinkman 23 grabs last year, but his first touchdown reception of his career for the senior out of Bel Air, Florida, Clearwater Catholic High School. And he gets cooled down as Swank will kick it off. And Scranton bobbles it and will down it here. So, so far, Wake Forest dominating this game. Baylor's first two possessions have been three and outs. And Wake took the short field for the field goal, a little bit longer field for the touchdown. And Kirby Freeman will stay on as Art Briles has told us that uh, he wants to get the freshman Robert Griffin in on a Copperas Cove, Texas. But you certainly want to get something rhythm going and you want to give Freeman a little confidence too. Well, it's just two series. I'm not sure he's ready to pull the plug here on this quarterback. He made a decision to start him. You got to get some run game and got to get some things going to work as well. They, they uh, graduated last year, Baylor. They had uh, Brandon Whitaker there. The leading rusher out of the ball game. There's a good look on the sideline of and that hopefully will be seen right. Robert Griffin, tremendous athlete from Coppers Cove, Texas. But give uh, Kirby Freeman a chance here to try to use the run game. That offensive line has got to do some things for him, Bill. They feel like they've got a very competent offensive front here. And as they grow together, they should be able to, to do some things, but you know, you know, pretty special. They feel like number 72, the left tackle, Jason Smith, is one of the more special players in the conference. Finley, a four-yard run is our new stop him, and Baylor keeps it on the ground on a second down and six. Our Suzuki scoring drive from the last Wake Forest possession. They were very methodical. 12 plays, 62 yards, and four minutes, 23 seconds, and Brinkman, the TD reception from Riley Skinner. And you can see the poise and the veteran leadership that Skinner brings, and Wake Forest very impressive in the early going. And now another third and three this time for Freeman and the Bears on their own 27. That's a protection, and he completes it. First down out across the 40-yard line. Justin Akers, a junior from Deer Park, Texas, in the Houston area, who had 43 receptions and four TDs last year. It's a nice round of applause from the crowd after a 13-yard pickup. Right, the tight end lines up in the backfield, able to come down, kind of checks. Nobody's coming on his side. He just goes up the seam, and good job by the quarterback getting it to him. A nice, easy throw and catch and a first down. The first one for Baylor in 2008. Right and get us wide right this time on a first and 10 with 527 and counting now in the first quarter. And Baylor trailing Wake Forest 10 zip. And the handoff again to Jay Finley, the sophomore of Corsicana, Texas. And Finley stuffed after a couple of yards. Anthony Davis, the defensive end, leading the way. And they feel like Jay Finley can be a good slash type runner, a power guy. He's got good pad level. He'll run through his shoulder in there between the tackles. And a couple of yards there on first down. Three, second down and seven from the 43. Second and seven now after the pickup of three. Right in motion behind the quarterback, Freeman. Freeman, fake to the back and then 
no fooling this Wake Forest defense as Stanley Arnu was there, a 6'1", 240-pound senior from Sunrise, Florida. Tell you what, that's a pretty good linebacking core they've got, Gary, with Curry, Arnu, and McClinic. Yeah, those guys are all talented players defensively. Ryan Lambert does a good job of coordinating that defense for Jim Grove. And Aaron Curry, number 59, one of the special players that he has on the field. And we're going to see him all over the field tonight. He can make plays sideline to sideline. He can rush the passer as well. Third and nine now for the Bears. Freeman, good protection. Oh. Incomplete and intercepted. Number 15. Alfonso Smith. Who else? <laughs> Alfonso Smith gets his 15th career interception. He had eight last year, three that he returned for touchdowns. This is going to be one of the easier ones. Just Finley just couldn't find the handle. Yeah, this ball should have been caught, no doubt about it. Finley, it pops off his shoulder pads. Didn't get his hands on it, tried to pull it in. Pops right up into Antonio Smith's hands, and he says, I'll take a freebie. So a frustrating start for Freeman and the Bears after they get their first first down and appears they're going to get another one. And they turn it over and Wake Forest possession at the 48 of Baylor with 4.05 to go in the first quarter. And there's Pendergrass in the ball game. Gets his first carry, slips as he tried to turn it up field and actually a loss of a yard on the play for the redshirt freshman Brandon Pendergrass. And they're trying to get these guys to cool down. They've got the cool vest there. Jim Knox talked about it before the ball game. They plug in on the sidelines and they get that core temperature of the body cooled down. That's what the, uh, that's what the objective is of those cool vests. Second and 11. Skinner now chased out of the pocket. Now rushing four, not getting there. And Skinner turns it up, picks up a yard or two. Made the most out of a negative situation. Earl Pratt and Skinner with the carry. Chase and making the stop. Skinner gets to the 45-yard line, and it'll be a third and long coming up now for Wake Forest. And there's his career numbers. He's 21 TDs, 18 picks. Yeah, they like to get that ratio a little better, touchdown to interception ratio. But overall, he's a guy that's poised to have a breakout year for his junior campaign. Third and seven, Baylor crowd trying to urge the Bear defense to be strong. They fake the blitz, he reads it, and they've got the first down as the reception is near the 38-yard line. Pavelic makes the tackle on Marshall Williams, but let's see where they spot it. It's gonna be close, right on the mark there, Bill. You may have called it. Been a clean game so far, no problems. Needed seven yards to get the first down. Big 12 officiating crew here. See the toss here by Skinner outside, and you see the screen they're trying to set up a little bubble screen, try to get the inside big guys to knock out those smaller defensive backs coming in, and see the spot and the measurement here. You see the blitz here. You bring in three on the right side, and the defense, the offensive line just let them go. And good effort that time by Pavelic. Turn around and run into the football and makes a tackle around the legs and makes it close. It's still a first down there for, for Wake Forest. Yeah, and you might have heard that crowd noise, the uh, gathering of Wake Forest fans that made the long trip from Winston-Salem. Team came in here late yesterday afternoon, stayed in Temple, and go back immediately after the game. Fumble, still loose, and Wake Forest has recovered at the 45-yard line. Pendergrass finally smothered it. Yeah, borderline defensive offsides from the outside, and the way it looked, the ball got away from Riley Skinner. I thought it was going to be an easy recovery here by Baylor. Take a look on the left side here. You're going to see a defender come in here. Riley Skinner's going to lose the handle. You see him now. I think he's offside. It's not called. And Skinner knocks it out there. And his Wake Forest teammates get on top of it. Pendergrass coming up with the football. Yeah, that ball not there. You know, first ball game starting here for Trey Bailey. Loss of seven. And Skinner keeps it this time. Whoa. And he slides forward to try not to take the brunt of it. And Jordan Lake was there to greet him at the 36-yard line. Well, there's another rule in college football change this year, and that's targeting with the head. And to me, that looked borderline close from a defensive player coming down. And you got to be really careful about that, hitting with the crown of the head and coming down on the player. And that's going to be a 15-yard penalty when the player targets him. And that tackle on Skinner sliding, and 
defensive player, they're going to be looking for those kinds of penalties this season, and also the horse collar tackle. That is now in college football. You make an aggressive pull on the outside, pull a player down immediately. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty. Third down and eight, and this one is complete. Running out of bounds has been Wooster. Richard Jr. out of Atlanta, Georgia. Patton made the tackle. Now Skinner's shown he's a tough guy, too. He takes a pretty good lick there on the, on the scramble. He gets outside and then gets right up and does his business. Toss it outside to Wooster, a tight end. Got a couple of tosses up to him already in this ballgame. Steve Lobotsky, all right, calling Coach Lobo. Rated Air Force. One of the keys to Wake Forest success is the stability that they've had with their coaching staff. That no doubt they all are on the same page because they've been there for most of them for the entire time that Jim Grove has as he starts his eighth year. Pavelic makes the tackle here. A well, short yard situation. Well, Bill, as much as players turn over in college football, it seems like coaching staffs tend to do that sometimes as well. Jim Grove hasn't had that problem. He's you know, sure he's elevated some guys to better positions, but for the most part, he's got guys that he he knows, he trusts. He turns over the offense to Coach Lobo, and has no problems with what he does. He can administrate and run the football team and not worry about the X's and O's. Skinner, 10 of 11 tonight, making 11 of 12 on a first and 10 as he connects with Bolden here. You know, the other thing is, Brian made the tackle with Grove. He's turned down some pretty good jobs and uh, made a comment that he goes, I'll promote my guys if yeah. they want to be promoted. And goes, he goes, but if you're kind of hanging around and waiting for me to, to move on for just for the money, he goes, no, I love it here. He goes, I'm staying here. And he is certainly shown to the folks from Wake Forest. He is committed. I hope I don't jinx it here, but I think we're going to get our first college football quarter without a penalty. Uh -oh. 18 <laughs> seconds to go. Skinner drills it across the middle and complete down near the seven yard line. And Lake making the tackle, the receiver Ben Wooster again. Wake getting just about whatever they want. Here. Yeah, just a good job of recognition. Defensively, they're playing zone coverage, and it looks like Wake Forest is just doing what they want to. They're bringing an extra player here from the outside. They drop a defensive end, trying to disguise what they're doing. But Riley Skinner, he's seen it all in Lake. The free safety having to come up and make the tackle. And the clock will wind down, and no, you didn't jinx, didn't it. jinx it. We're probably due for about 10 yellow flags in the second quarter, now that you said that. Tell you what, nothing wrong with the way Wake Forest is playing, as they have controlled things, have a 10 nothing lead here, and they're currently on a drive of over four minutes on this one. That's the end of the first quarter with a score of 10 0 Wake Forest. You're watching a special edition of Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Suzuki. <laughs> special edition of College Football Saturday. The Demon Deacons of 23rd ranked Wake Forest up 10 0 on the Baylor Bears as we get ready for the start of the second quarter. USA to co Today coaches poll, the preseason rankings. You see those little arrows. Five Big 12 teams ranked in the top 14. You see Wake being ranked for the first time preseason ever. There's three teams out of the ACC. Clemson also picked as the team to beat in that league. For the Big 12, it is wide open this year. Yeah, yeah pretty good to, pretty good respect there in the Big 12. Jim Grobe's team, first time ever preseason poll. Skinner hands it off here. And Pendergrass. Inside the five yard line, Lake making the tackle. We'll take a look at what happened in the first half here. You see Baylor not getting a whole lot done there. Time of possession is really key. Wake Forest over 10 minutes with the football, only four minutes or so for Baylor. So Wake Forest definitely control this ball game. Yeah, and sometimes time of possession is misleading in those wide open throw at 60 time offenses. But on a hot night like this for both teams are trying to run the football, time of possession is huge. And look here. Pendergrass scoots into the end zone for his first touchdown as a Demon Deacon, and it is 16 to nothing. Nice play call that time by Coach Lobo. Unbalanced line by Wake Forest, and they take an extra body over there as well. Enough guys to count over to account for everyone you're going to see. There's only two defense, two offensive linemen on this side. Block down, block down, seal. You're going to run right off that edge. Good job by Pendergrass getting into the end zone. Took just four minutes, or took four minutes, 43 seconds, as they work some clock, 11 plays and 48 yards, and swank for the PAT, and this is good as well. He's 44-44 last year, and he's perfect on his first couple this season. It is 17 to nothing. 
Baylor on the short side. Welcome back, Big 12 College Football Saturday. Special Thursday night edition here at Boyd Casey Stadium in Waco, Texas. The Baylor Bears on the short side as Wake Forest off to a 17-0 lead in the early moments of the second quarter. And to kick it off again will be Sam Swank, the senior. He's a nice job kicking off. Baylor has not been able to return any of these footballs being five, six yards deep in the end zone. This one will be returned from the 11-yard line. Lamar, and somehow sports through for a couple more yards to about the 28. Polaris Ranger now presents our hardest working player. And Pendergrass is getting his first work here. And Brand to get the touchdown after his fourth carry. Good little fun there for a freshman. Four rushes, nine yards, and a little pay dirt action. And Speaking of freshmen, here's the freshman quarterback, Robert Griffin, the Conference Cove, Texas, 6'3", 200. He is a dynamite-type player, great speed. He pitches it out here on a little option look, and Sims is knocked out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Robert Griffin, who has already won the 400-meter hurdles in the Big 12 this year. Uh, you just look at the numbers here, rating third best coming out as a dual threat quarterback in speed, 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 12 pick 12, 400 meter hurdle champ. Came to school, enrolled in January here at Baylor and got that championship under his belt. He's actually an Olympic contender, didn't make the team, but brings a lot of athleticism to the quarterback position here for Baylor and could be something good for Art Bryles and his football team. Had been committed to Houston when Bryles was there. When Bryles made the move following last season, he quickly came right along with it as Finley is tackled here by Curry. We talked about the hurdles, the Big 12 championships, the spring of 08. Well, and lane five right there. Get it done, just running away from the pack here and get that last hurdle. Excellent job here to win in a race here, the championship, and a little tired at the end, though. Won the Midwest region and then finished third in the NCAAs. All just a few months after graduating from high school. Yet he still was able to compete here at spring football. Rolls out, fires, and incomplete. A little bit too hot to handle that time for Mikhail Baker. And Baker had a chance to take that and looked like a ball that was nice, easy throw and catch there. But like you said, Bill, maybe a little bit too much juice on it. Nice, confident toss and throw. That ball needs to be catch. Uh, he knows he's got a first down and he gets that ball caught. And he's got to kind of suck it up and get on the sideline now. Looks like it's going to be a fourth down in a punting situation for Baylor. But you see the little electricity that Griffin brings to this football team. And he got the ball in his hands. And they run that zone read, I think, uh, kind of like to perfection. And they get the mileage out of it like the guys down in Austin did with uh, Mr. Vince Young. Well, they'd like all about that. And it's fourth and four. And timeout. Wake Forest. Take a look at Epperson's numbers. Remember the first punt, only about 10 yards. Great field position for Wake Forest to start the ball game. We'll take a break as well. 17-0, Demon Deacons with the lead. This special edition of College Football Saturday is brought to you by Liberty Mutual, providing auto, home, and life insurance from a company that's as responsible as you are. Responsibility, what's your policy? By Sport Clips, guys love sports, guys get haircuts. And the first down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order ships for just $2.95 at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. Wake Forest. Oh, about ready to get the football back as Epperson, for his 20, just did get it off. Fonzo Smith, the deep man for the Deacons at the 18-yard line. Dodges a couple and three more before stepping out of bounds and a flag on the play. It's send it down to Jim Knox. Thank you, Bill. Robert Griffin right now walking on the sidelines. You know, he was started warming up in the first quarter. This is actually scripted to get in in the second quarter. On the sidelines, he came back to the bench. He was all smiles for a freshman, very calm, cool, and collected. And, and Gary, just like you said, the electricity you could just feel on the sidelines as well, not only in the stands. Number eight. 
Well, sometimes it takes a special player like a Robert Griffin to electrify not only his football team, but the fans. Everybody who's watching the Baylor Bear program, you're going to have a lot of fans that are like to see what he's able to do with this program, getting under center. It doesn't take away anything the other, other quarterbacks can do and are able to, to accomplish, but Robert Griffin is a guy that I think they've got a lot of hope in. Penalty was on Williams, a 47-yard punt, and now Wake Forest pushed back even further, but a bullet pass that is complete to Devon Brown. So they go on a first and 10 at their 17-yard line. Lake makes the tackle on Brown. That'll move the chains, it appears, right here. Now, this is a nice job here by Riley Skinner rolling to his left. And watch the ball at the throw that he goes right down the numbers there. Separation outside of Joe Pavelic there, the linebacker, and inside the safety coming over the top. Good seam throw and a route, to, route run. So Brown gives him a first attempt at 20. I'm just going to say Baylor's finally got weight pushed back a little bit in a negative situation. They come right out. This time they corral Brown, and he is stopped near the 27. And Vincent Rhodes was there, a senior from Denison, Texas. Well, I'm not sure that Brown is actually going to go anywhere on that play. He just kind of dropped the handoff initially, but. Uh, Inside here, it's going to be key, I think, in the offensive front here. Joe Birdsong, Russell Neenon, and Trey Bailey. Watch Bailey here try to scoop the, the, the defensive lineman there. Not able to do so. Trey Bryant actually gets out there, gets a little bit of touch on Brown, get down on the outside. Second and 10. Wait for it for the 17 0 lead. Skinner delivers to the outside, and it is complete out there to Brinkman, who had a touchdown earlier. <laughs> He's near the 37-yard line. First down markers brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order ships with just $2.95 at Overstock.com. That's Overstock.com at home with the O. You see all those guys sitting there on the field. Well, they're just watching on the sideline. They're getting the play call. No huddle, no reason to hurry up and get back in the, the offensive muddle and then go to the line of scrimmage. I think offensive linemen might like this here. Skinner hands it off again here. And... Stop at the 40-yard line that time is the fullback, Rich Belton. Now, there's been a lot of teams in college football. It's not new to go to a no huddle or sugar huddle. You get up the line of scrimmage and you look around and you see what's up there and get your play from the sideline. They'll utilize the coaches from the box to get the communication down the sideline and they'll signal it inside. Don't have the NFL communication yet from the, the uh, press box down to the helmet of the quarterback. That might be something they'll look at here depending upon how the communication goes throughout college football this season. Pendergrass, oh, he was smacked as he came across the 43-yard line. Joe Pavelic brought that ride to a quick halt. Now, Pendergrass got off his feet a little bit there, and Pavelic, a smart, heady linebacker, not afraid to hit anybody, steps up, watch 41 on your right side of the screen there, step up and bingo. Ooh, get a high low there on the, on the low side, Antonio Johnson, a little action there as well. Well, like 98 tackles, 99 tackles last year, second team all-conference pick in the Big 12. Skinner tonight is 14 of 15 for 103. He's got second and seven here all day, wide open, and complete, incomplete. DJ Bolden, the intended receiver there. Two deep zone coverage there, and Skinner sees he's got a receiver right down the middle of the field. Nice easy toss here, but uh, Bolden doesn't bring it in. You see, he can over the linebacker level there. That's all he's got to do, and then just not being able to bring it in. I don't think any problem here not seeing the football, but that should be a catch, a nice easy grab. Gonna hurt his percentage though, Billy. Now he's 14 yeah. or 16. Well, and where do you go when you go 72.9% like he did last year to lead the nation? Third and seven now. Baylor bringing some heat, and Skinner is brought down on the play. Now, I tell you, in borderline again, offsides penalty, defense moving there, down the line of scrimmage. You'll see the defender coming down the field. Jeremy Williams trying to get there. We'll take a look again here on the near sideline. Jeremy Williams comes, kind of reads the snap, and we'll take a look here. Watch, is he going to get across the neutral zone prior to the snap? We'll take a quick look. Well, that's awful close, but uh, nonetheless, that's a nice play there. Gets around the left offensive tackle. Jeff Griffin not able to get a hat on it. He's out of Dallas Carter High School, and he forces a punt situation as they will kick it away. And deep at the 20, and the hit is made right there, down about the 18-yard line. We'll take a brief break. We'll be right back. It is Wake Forest leading 17 to nothing over Baylor.
Demon Deacons from Wake Forest lead at 17-0 over Baylor, and the Bears, coached by first-year head coach Art Bryles, comes here after five years at Houston, where he turned them around at 34 and 28. He didn't fool around either. Yeah, five got, years, four bowls. That's pretty good. He gets started there with seven wins to kick it off. Get 10 wins in 2006. Got him to a bowl game last year, eight wins. Did not coach in that bowl game. Took the job here in November, excuse me, in December here to get to come to come to Baylor. So didn't coach that ball game, but they're trying to get that same type of success established here in Waco. Griffin comes back as the quarterback here, the freshman, and hands it off on a first and 10 from the 19. And Finley scampers out near the 25-yard line. The other thing with Art Bryles, he has spent his entire coaching career here in Texas yeah, yeah. and had great success at Stephenville High School where he won four state titles as a head coach. Went to Texas Tech for three years as an assistant with Mike Leach, then to Houston. You saw what he did there. He's a former president of the Texas High School Coach Association, and it gives Baylor in a football-rich state some real connections and chances to try to turn it around. Griffin shows you his escapability, if you will, as he scampers to the Wake Forest sideline, and a flag is thrown over there. Arnu is the one that forced him out. And Bill, back about to Art Browse. I don't think it was a strange hire. I think it's a good hire here for Baylor because of all the ties that he has in the state of Texas. And Dead ball, personal foul, lay get out of bounds. Don't we'll give Baylor a little life. And we'll take a look here. He's out of bounds, steps outside there, and maybe there's something on the ground there in front of him. But more about Art. You know, I think that he, you know, with his tenure in high school football here and what he did, he got a got his start in college football out at uh, in Lubbock with Mike Leach as an assistant on his staff, then took the program over at in Houston, and he's had that success. He's been done it all right here, so he's got some connections. You know, talking about recruiting and bringing players here, he's got a little different mindset there than what's been going on in the past. Uh, he said, let it be known, it's an open school that we are looking for people to help us turn this thing around, and you want to do it, do it right. Baylor's a place to come to. Well, this time, the coverage yeah, breaks down on the pass pro, and Griffin is brought down. A little temper's flaring there. Boo Robinson, who got assessed with a penalty, led the way to make the tackle this time. Yeah, and Bill, when you talk about recruiting, you talk about bringing in talent, you know, there's kind of been a smaller pool that Baylor would have normally gone after recruiting the recruiting game, but I think that that may be opening up a little bit here, a little bit different philosophy. Maybe when Art Browse came and took the job, that's one of the things he discussed. If he made that comment to us about being open recruiting here, an opportunity for players to come here, and they're looking for athletes, and that may be me showing a paradigm shift here at Baylor. Second down and 12. Griffin. Oh, a sensational grab that time, and complete, and still out across the 50, and still going, and Finley knocked out of bounds on the 35, and this crowd at Floyd Casey Stadium just aching for something to shout about, and they have it. Nice little toss there by Griffin to the outside, and didn't look like it's going to be a catch at first because Finley's juggling that football, but he gets a handle on it, and, and he does a nice job of running after the catch. See him getting that right hand, left hand, pull it in, and overrun by the defense by Wake Forest, and he gets a nice run there on the sideline. Finley, 18 receptions in a TD last year. He carried 55 times on the ground. He picks up 26 yards, and Baylor, it's their best play from scrimmage tonight. There's 7.53 to go in the half, trying to get something going here. Sims tries to go up the middle, and Ray Sims, a senior from Corsicana, Texas. He is tripped up. Now you haven't seen Robert Griffin actually run with the football yet tonight. Look for that to happen here, perhaps on a zone read or something get him around on the edge. But uh, he's got explosive speed. We've seen that. A little hurdle clip that he showed. And he's running hurdles. He's a, he's a very fast young man. That 26-yard play is longer than any Baylor drive so far tonight. So personnel grouping here, problem by Baylor, 12 men on the field. Number 23. Five-yard penalty, second down. Yeah, and there's some of the things I think we're going to see a little bit here early in the season in college football with the no huddle and the personnel substitution just getting the wrong guys out there. And Gary, both coaches and college coaches in general are all saying, man, we can't, we're nervously waiting to find out how it's going to work. But the difference with this in the NFL, you don't have those microphones and those hearing uh, units in the helmets. Yeah, you, they're, they're starting to talk to their quarterback as soon as that 40-second clock starts in the NFL. You don't have that. You're looking to the sideline to get a signal from the coach. Ball dumped outside here to Baker. Wake Forest showing good speed and containment, though, and making the tackle near the 37-yard line. 
Take a look at our Advance Auto Ports leaders. And you go back to last year, different players with 15 plus receptions and the teams that have those players, Troy, New Mexico State, Texas Tech and Baylor. Whole different offense though that they were running last year with Guy Morris where he had kind of gone to the Mike Leach, Texas Tech, that wide open spread all the time. Well, I think that Art Browles has some of that mentality, yeah. but he's not full blown there. He's just going to use multiple personnel, multiple formations. Doesn't have the super wide, wide line splits that the Texas Tech utilizes. Third and 12, and this one, Griffin cannot connect with his wide out as covering was Brandon G, the junior from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Now a long fourth down situation here, fourth and 12, and at the plus 37. So what do they do here? Are they going to go out to punt the football? Or are they going to go ahead and go for it here on fourth down? Offensive line is out there. Maybe we're going to take a timeout here. Play clock down to 20 seconds, 40 seconds now when the ball is overthrown and gets get the play clock gets started. Going for it here. Robert Griffin back in the huddle. Fourth and 12 with 633 to go in this first half of play. Special edition of college football Saturday on a Thursday night here in Waco. Just got it off. Griffin beat the clock. Now wow. can he connect? Boy, he throws a rocket and incomplete. He has an arm. There's no doubt about that. Geddes, the intended receiver. Well, when he scoots back there and he sets up to throw this football, here's Geddes going to come down and try to get a little hook right there to get to the first down yardage and zoom. That ball is flying up over his head. A little excited there for the young freshman coming in here to play in his ball game, but certainly showing that he's got ability with his feet and also there with the arm, just a little errant pass. So Wake Forest will get the football back in pretty good field position on their own 37. We come back, the Deacons lead at 17-0. All season long, Champion Apparel will be showcasing the history and traditions of the Big 12 Conference. Today, we highlighted Baylor. Champion, it's how you play. What kind of shirt does that bear wear? <laughs> Any kind he wants. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And uh, better have the groceries. Well, Baylor in a tough situation. You got 6.28 to go second quarter. Wake Forest takes over again. 17-0, first and 10 from their own 37. And they hand it off to Adams. Jim Grove and Wake Forest, we mentioned earlier on that his plan after coming from Ohio University where he turned that program around, they were dismal and he went 500 there in his years, was all right, I'm gonna establish guys and I need fourth and fifth year players. And they saw the fruition of that with the Orange Bowl year two years ago when they had their first fully recruiting class and it's carried over. Yeah, he's been committed to not playing freshmen, true freshmen especially in, in the seven years that Jim Grove has been running this program, only 10 true freshmen have played for him. That's amazing, that's less than two per season. So not having to rely on the young guys, Baylor thinking they've got the football. And they do. I think it's Crawford that came up with it. And Baylor gets the first big break that it's had all night on the fumble recovery. Right. Dwayne Crawford, the senior from Giddings, Texas. And plus territory around the 44 yard line. Dwayne Crawford coming up on the outside. Didn't see the ball pop loose. Maybe they just took it away from the receiver. See on the outside and it's exactly what happened. Dwayne Crawford pulls the ball out. It goes down to the ground. Boy, it laid there for seemingly forever. And that was Marshall Williams. Ball got stripped. And here comes Griffin back in the game. Hands it off. Baylor on the running play. We'll take another look at that before we get back to Baylor's offense. And there's Williams at the top of the screen. He's going to get the football. Catches it. Tucks it. Good football move. So the ball is live. Crawford pulls it out. It still stays on the field, field of play. And guess what? Go get it. <laughs> My football. Baylor gets that turnover. And they're helping on that play for Baylor. Is Antonio Johnson, the uh, sophomore linebacker, will create that turnover. Griffin on the option gives it up, and Wake Forest not fooled for a minute as Patterson a thundering blow. Well, that's offense. Excuse me. That's a assignment football there defensively. Brian Lambert, the defense coordinator, works his play. He's seen it in their conference. It's here at the Big 12, and nothing new. Just come up and make a good sure tackle. Did you see the shot that Curry said, hello, Robert Griffin. Welcome to college football 
after he released that football. Yeah, Kevin Patterson on the tackle there. Good play. Here's Griffin back to pass in trouble. They're coming after it. And he completes it. Flag is thrown and brought down at the 33-yard line. Maybe a late hit here on the quarterback here. They're taking a look at it. And they got a flag out there where, where Griffin was. Maybe, maybe have somebody in front of him holding. We don't know for sure. We'll take a listen. Yeah, would have been a first down, too. Good grab there on the outside, and Griffin getting the completion, but it's coming back. Well, it seems pretty obvious, Gary, that Jim Grove and his crew are going to come after you the freshman quarterback and say, all right, we know the athletic talent he's got. Let's see if we can make him quick decisions. Uh, they want to strike defensively, come up, and obviously uh, between the whistles and correctly, but it'll be a physical football defensive team. That's what I know the Coach Grove would like to see out there. So the completion to Justin Fente in the positive play turns into a negative, and it's now third and 16 from midfield. Here's Griffin going to the other sideline, and it is complete and down to the 35-yard line, shy of the first down as Gettis, the receiver, a 15-yard pickup. It's going to be close to the mark there on the first down. Only rushing a couple outside there for, for Wake Forest. The interior player is looking for screen. Not going to be there, but sets up outside nicely, tosses it out there, and just going to be a, maybe a touch short here, Bill. Fourth down and one. Baylor not hesitating or asking any questions, though. They immediately came out with the group that they wanted. Play clock at 13. Griffin's got time here. Blaylock, the man in motion, splits wide right. The handoff, second effort. Is it enough? I think so. We'll see as Curry making the tackle on Jay Finley. Now they're solid inside. Those two defensive tackles, John Russell and Boo Robinson, penetrating there for Wake Forest defense. And then Curry comes in and makes the tackle and have to measure this one. Uh, no. Want to get penetration defensively, that's what Wake Forest does. You see number 51, John Russell there, get a little contact, and then Curry coming in, making the tackle, but the effort there by the back, and they're getting it. First down, Baylor Bears. It doesn't take much. You get your big center out there, Walt well, just kind of isolates him and doesn't, doesn't have a linebacker in his face, so right behind him, job by Finley. They were bringing a whole other crew of players out on the field and rolling them out there for the offense. Changing personnel groups. At the 34-yard line, freshman Robert Griffin got this team moving a bit right now. He's got an offensive lineman out here at the bottom of the screen. Four wide outs to the bottom of your screen. Griffin looks that way, comes back right, going for one-on-one -on -one coverage. Incomplete. Now they're not going to fool that guy. He is a great cornerback. That is on to Alfonso Smith, number two, running with the speed he gets down the sideline. Good ball skills. And what he did was he took the clues that the receiver gave him, and he turned back, knocked the football away. Excellent play by Alfonso Smith. Smith, who got his 15th career interception earlier tonight. Look, Look at, at this. Wa watching and tracking the football. Just takes his hand in there, knocks it away from Geddes. Looked like he had a... Had a little leg there on him. Nice toss by the quarterback back there. Griffin throws a pretty good football. But Smith, the heady defensive player that he is, not as tall as Geddes as you'll see, but just enough to knock that ball away. Yeah, that's 6-4 versus 5-9. But Smith, smart guy, veteran player, great second effort. He's got a, just enough in there to affect Geddes on trying to make the grab. Timeout called now with 3.23 to go. And Alfonso Smith with already another interception, 14 on his career. And you see him just going for the football, gets his right hand in there underneath, knocks it away. I'm sure they get his thought, hey, I've got a touchdown here. My quarterback, young Robert Griffin, tossed me a good one, but uh, not to be because of Alfonso Smith. But, well, Baylor, with Art Bryles coming in here, one of the things he's got going for him is they have a new athletic center. You may not be aware, but this football stadium is miles away from the campus. The only one like it in the Big 12. Yesterday, our crew was able to shoot some of the video of the $34 million Hires Athletics Complex and Simpson Academic Center. Three football practice fields, a football locker room, strength and conditioning center, sports medicine center, athletics equipment room, 
the offices for the coaches and meeting rooms, academic facilities for the athletes, and athletic administrative offices. And it's right in the middle, Gary, of all of the sports complex here. And it's really going to unify, I think, the whole Baylor Athletic Department. Griffin on the keeper. Stayed in bounds. Wow. 25. Are you kidding? Oh, my. Look at Griffin dance. And <laughs> took his way inside the 15. McGee makes the tackle. Now you see me, now you don't. That's what he did to the Wake Forest defense on the sideline. I think the Wake Forest defense felt like Robert Griffin may stop and go out of bounds, but no, he's going to stop on the sideline. Let the traffic clear out, and guess what? I'm going to stop and start. No tackle there. Zoop! Got a flyby, and then he's going to get another 15, 20 yards here with his speed. 22-yard pickup, and the crowd is buzzing. It's first and 10 at the 12. Right up the middle. Touchdown, Baylor! Jacoby Jones with the TD. Well, it all started with the turnover. You got Crawford who pulled that ball out, got the fumble recovery, and guess what? A few plays later with a young quarterback, a little bit of running game, a little bit of luck perhaps, but nonetheless getting it down there and making an efficient drive of a turnover situation, putting points on the board. Then Parks will come on for the point after. He's just a freshman out of Argyle, oh. Texas. And it is good, no good, as he missed it. And it stays at 17-6, goes wide to the right. But Jacoby Jones, after Griffin's run, gets him on the board. Welcome back to Floyd KC Stadium in officially Beverly Hills, Texas. Also just outside of Waco, if you will, as Baylor on the board and the kickoff comes to Wake Forest and good coverage by the special teams unit. But Wake will still get excellent field position here. Well, it's good to get the crowd into it. They're certainly electrified because the offense took a turnover down the field. Young quarterback Robert Griffin getting, the, getting his troops rally. Kobe Jones doing a nice job, turn it over, taking it down the field. You see the pull out here. Crawford's going to pull the football out. Hey, go get that football. He gets the recovery, and then Griffin on the outside, going to do a little dancing magic here, watch him stop and start. Get him 22 here on this play. Kobe Jones, good blocking up front. Little trap play coming across and finishes for the score. He got 12 yards on his first carry and a TD. Devon Brown returned that kick of seven yards, and now Wake Forest goes right back to work as they come to D.J. Bolden and connect at the 35-plus. And Antonio Jones made the tackle. Our Suzuki scoring drive for Baylor, seven plays, 44 yards, and Jones caps it off as Jacoby Jones with the first Baylor score of the year. He's a senior from Bangs, Texas. And the first uh, possession in hostile territory and the Wake Forest positive side of the field. And but in the end zone. Skinner, 16 of 18, going to the air. It was deflected, intended for Adams. And now the defense trying to answer the call. First down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% on brand name products every day. Overstock.com at home with the O. First time the Baylor's gotten pressure on Riley Skinner bringing four. Had a rusher off the edge, hit the quarterback as he's throwing the football, not able to deliver. Third down and five here. Jason Lamb, the big heat from the Baylor defensive side. Adams goes split out now. Here's Skinner alone in the backfield, and it is complete to Wooster. Breaks the tackle, dives across to the 45-yard line. They'll mark it at the 46. It'll be a first down for Wake Forest as we send it down to Jim Knox. All right, thanks, Bill. Football Saturday studios and join John Radigan and Pat Jones with all that information. Right, Bruiser? You got it, buddy. All right, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Doxing. Look forward to John and Coach Jones here at halftime. Skinner slides into the 50 and helmet. Antonio Jones late hit here. Realizes. Yeah, Riley Skinner, a smart quarterback, taking what he gets and just slides down. And this is twice now that Baylor defensively saw Jordan Lake earlier in the ballgame. This time he slides down and then a late hit there. He's 
Already giving himself up. No need for him to come down on the on the contact. And well, the Baylor defense is jacked up here. You got to control your emotions and realize the situation. You only got Jones 150 there. to go here, and you had a little momentum until then. Now Wake Forest first and ten at the 35. Skinner across the middle. Bolden wrapped up and tackled at the 30-yard line and. Jones and Jake Lamar there. And Bill, what you have here in Wake Forest is you've got a veteran football team. They're not going to get all riled up about a turnover and points off that. Well, Baylor fans are. Baylor's happy about it, but they just go to work out there. Mr. Dependable, Mr. Reliable, Riley Skinner, that 70 plus percentage completion percentage a year ago, just goes right back after the work for Jim Grove and the football team. Second and five, he escapes the rush here. Now we'll tuck it under and trying to avoid the big hit at the 25, Scott. Putting pressure on. Gets the first down as well. Nice job of, avoid, of avoiding the rush. Skinner steps up in the pocket, and most offensive linemen, they're always trying to watch that de those defenders around to the outside, and Skinner steps up through there and scoots forward for the first down. Third down conversions, Wake 5 of 8 tonight. Baylor just 1 of 7, plus the 17 to 6 score as well in favor of the Demon Deacons. Everything well spread out defensively for Baylor. Four guys working. First and 10, 114 to go over the middle, and it is incomplete. Helmets being racked around there, intended for DJ Bolden, covering on the play, Jordan Lake. The junior out of Houston. The yeah, only rushing four here against the quarterback, and I think they need to bring a little more pressure on this. They need to get to the quarterback, Riley Skinner. Take a look at the slide protection here. They're going to bring their fullback out on a defensive end. A little unique there to do, but Richard Belton's big enough to do it. Nice play in the secondary by Lake, a second team preseason Big 12 all conference selection. So he's a guy that goes to the football. They covered 55 yards on this drive. They got a minute 10 left to work with on a second and 10 from the 25. Incomplete. Somebody may have got a hand on that one, I think. Yeah. yeah. I think they did. They took it. Riley Skinner trying to do drop it over the offense de defensive line there. And like one of the Bear defenders may have got a hand on it. So it brings up a third and ten. Two roads, Pavelic and crew all trying to rally here. Key part of the game. I mean, particularly Wake trying to come back and answer. Baylor trying to get a stop here and carry some momentum in the locker room at the half. Third and ten. Skinner, they come after him. He escapes one. In the end zone, and it is incomplete. Covering on the play, Jeremy Williams. Pavelic had the pressure on the quarterback. And now they'll bring Swank out for the field goal attempt. Now yeah, Pavelic had him dead to rights in the backfield, but Roddy Skinner getting outside, and you see the toss here. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage out there trying to get it out to the receiver. The ball just goes away. Remember, Swank last year, 18 of 21, as long as 52 career, counting the Knights 40 yarder. He's 61 of 73, and his longest from 53. This one will be a 42 yarder. Remember, he had a 40 yarder the other direction to get Wake Forest on the board. Sam Swank, the senior from Jacksonville Beach, Florida. 42 yard boot with just under a minute to go, and it is good. So Wake Forest tells the folks here in Waco, settle down as they answer with a three, and it is 17 to six. Well, we've got a lot of folks back in Winston-Salem who went to bb and Field and are enjoying the game on the big screen there as Wake Forest is proud of its brand new $47 million Deacon Tower at bb and Field. And it's opening for the Demon Deacons home opener that comes up next weekend against Ole Miss, September 6th. The facility contains upscale box suites, club suites, media seating, state-of-the-art camera broadcast technology, and just adding to the development and the commitment that they made to Jim Grove in that program. Yeah, a lot of students out there, a lot of fans watching. We're saying hello to you guys out there, and they're probably waving back at us. Don't have a camera out there, but Jim Grove knows he's got some some happy fans back there. They're starting this season pretty good here for him with his football team up in his ball game, comfortably 20 to six. I think he's got to be pleased with how things have gone on. Now they've got, uh, they like Baylor playing three BCS teams in their non conference schedule. He doesn't shy away from anybody at Wake Forest. He says, We want to go home and home with everybody that we can. And they kick it off here. Swank boots it off and it was taken on the goal line. And up to the 20. 
And then Baker spins across to the 26-yard line. And that's where he's brought down with 47 seconds to go, a 26-yard return. Jim Grobe had spent some time at Ohio where he saw them go 33-1 and one, and then at Wake Forest the last five years. And he said it's no coincidence that 11-win season and Orange Bowl appearance came when he had his first fully recruited class. Yeah, looking to get that third bowl appearance in a row here for Wake Forest. Something hadn't happened since 1950. Yeah, they haven't had three consecutive winning seasons since 50-52. to 52. Griffin, the fake and the rollout. And now unloads it and he's going to pay. You can tell as Wake Forest has come after him. He is a big, strong guy, and not only does Art Bryles talk about his, his intelligence, but his maturity, and until physically, he'd not your normal freshman at 6'3", 200 pounds. Yeah, he's a big, strong guy. He's got athleticism. There's no doubt about it. He's got a great build to him, and he's got to learn the ropes here. He's got excitement written all over him for sure. Second and 10. Oh, incomplete to Thomas White, and a couple of those now have gone off the hands of Baylor receivers. Griffin tossing the ball out there for him. You know, it's okay. Get that five, six yards on second down. It makes it a lot more manageable for a third down situation. Art Browse, do, it does call the plays here for this football team from the sideline, but I don't know what you call him third and ten here. Gets a pretty good defense. And at 36 seconds to go, you just don't want to give Wake at this point anything to work with on another possible long field goal attempt by Swank. They're one of seven and third down conversions. And spinning outside is Kendall Wright. Or he is brought down well short of the first down. And Kevin Patterson, the free safety making the tackle, a senior out of Kingsland, Georgia. You hear that? Wake Forest calling the timeout. They think they got a chance here to make something out of 26 seconds, and why not? They talk it over. I want to remind you that Sunday, September 7th, the NFL on Fox regular season begins. An exciting doubleheader. First, the Rams take on the Eagles, or it's the Bucks and Saints, or Seahawks, Bills, or Lions, Falcons. Pay attention. There'll be a quiz later. Then the Cowboys battle the Browns, or the Panthers take on LT and the Chargers, or the Cardinals and the 49ers. The coverage begins Sunday, September 7th, America's number one pregame show, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, and high def only on Fox. Now one of the big things that uh, Baylor wanted to find out this year coming into the season was how much improvement they could make on defense. New defensive coordinator brought in here, Brian Norwood, trying to turn things around and hasn't had a great first half, giving up 20 points here in his ball game. They came after Epperson that time. Smith stays away from it, and it takes a Baylor bounce all the way inside the 15-yard line. So Epperson, after almost eating the football, avoided it got off a high kick and took a great roll for the Baylor Bears. So they only killed 27 seconds on that possession, but now there's only 12 left in the half. Yeah, watch the right side of your screen there. Just at the end of the play here, almost gets to him. And does he contact him? Ooh. You know, if he knows, if he leaves that leg out there, he's going to get uh, get get contact, but he pulls it back. And I can't tell if he touches him or not. Loses his balance nonetheless. 58-yard punt that time for Epperson. And now Wake Forest will... He's coming in there making the contact. I'm talking about the points by Baylor's defense. Last year in Big 12 Conference play, Bill, not what they wanted. Outscored 31 and a half points per game. They've got to change things defensively to help that offensive production as well. So they take the down here, and they've got to be pretty excited. As Wake Forest came out, dominated early. Then after Baylor took advantage of the turnover and got a touchdown, Wake quickly moved down the field answered again with another swank field goal and they certainly carry the momentum with them at half at 20 to 6 as Jim Grobe's club leads it here at the half Baylor's lone touchdown coming on the run by Jones meanwhile swank a pair of field goals Brinkman a TD and Pendergrass a TD for the Demon Deacons let's send it down to Jim Knox he's got the head coach Jim Grobe with it all right thank you Bill coach you got to be pleased you guys just about dominating the first half Riley Skinner just about picture perfect as well 
Yeah, I was pleased. I thought the fumble in the second quarter, we lost some momentum offensively, and the turnover got them fired up. And then I didn't think our defense responded very well. But we're fortunate to be in at halftime with this score. Real quick, your thoughts on Robert Griffin, the freshman quarterback of Baylor? Very, very talented. Very talented. Hard to hard to get your hands on. And we've got to do some talking here at halftime, try to contain him a little bit. All right, thank you, Coach, for the time. Right now, Wake Forest leading Baylor at half, 20 to 6. Let's head to the College Football Saturday studios. Enjoy John Radigan and Pat Jones. John? Jim Knox, thank you very much. John Radigan and Pat Jones here in the College Football Saturday studios and thrilled to once again be a part of Big 12 football coverage here on FSN. And, Coach, we saw and knew that Wake Forest was a team that's coming off back-to-back -back bowl seasons for the first time in their history and that they are a ranked team. Yet maybe we saw a little bit of the future in Robert Griffin for Baylor tonight. John, I think that's exactly right. Robert Griffin, the freshman quarterback from Baylor, has got some juice. He's inspired this entire football team. Wake has got nine starters back from a quality defensive unit. A year ago, Riley Skinner, the Wake quarterback, is really playing well and is going to play well. But Robert Griffin has got this, this Baylor crowd excited. Up next, we check out some other action from around the Big 12. Yes, there's one other game to talk about. We've got highlights and more analysis of the first half of this one coming up. Welcome to a special Thursday night edition of Big 12 College Football Saturday at Boyd KC Stadium in Waco. The homestanding Baylor Bears on the short side in the season opener, 23rd ranked Wake Forest with a 20 to 6 lead as we get set for the start of the second half. We welcome you, Bill Land, along with Gary Reasons. Wake Forest living up to that number 23 national ranking. But, Gary, Baylor did have a little bit of excitement for themselves during the first half. It's just all about possessions. You get the ball on the positive side of the field. Well, you got to make some plays on defense sometimes, and that's what happened for Baylor in this series. You take Dwayne Crawford on the outside, a senior pulls the ball out, gets the recovery, gets the ball back to his offense in good field position, then the offense takes over. Young Robert Griffin, the freshman quarterback, little stop and start here, 22-yard scamper. That sets up a nice, easy run here by his tailback, Jacoby Jones. Good blocking on the outside, and the Bears get in the end zone the first touchdown of 2008. But on the other side for Wake Forest, we talked a lot about their veteran quarterback, Riley Skinner. He is as billed, outstanding, very smart, handles the ball well, and he's been very impressive. He's a junior. He knows this system. He knows what to do with it. Accurate thrower, just I'll tell you, just tremendous what he's done with the football. 18 of 24 in the first half. Done a great job distributing the ball. 75% completions. You see the little what he does, their little touch pass in to get inside to his receiver for the touchdown. Chip Brinkman. So Riley Skinner, a very efficient quarterback, and you see the stats here all dominated by Wake Forest. Over 17 minutes of time of possession. They've done a great job on third down, converting five of eight, where Baylor, on the other hand, only one of eight third down. They've got to play a little better when they need to offensively to help out that defense a little bit, and they need to make some more big plays, perhaps with turnovers. All right, thanks, Gary. A look there at our College Colors Day halftime stats. And the big one, of course, is the score, 20 to 6 in favor of Wake Forest. And as they ended the half with possession of the football, they start the second half receiving the kickoff here also. And Parks with a kick, and it is a short one. Fumbled and then recovered and brought back to the 35-yard line. And bringing the football that time. Wake Forest will set up first and 10, and it looks like right at the 35. Tunnel. So let's see if Wake comes out and can be as impressive to start the second half as they were in the first half. You look at the possession chart. Field goal, TD, TD, punt, fumble. Then they respond with the field goal. And then, of course, the clock was the... Uh, big thing there at the end of the half. They did everything they needed to except for the one fumble there as we talked about, but uh, that's a good defensive play by Dwayne Crawford to pull that football out. But Rodney Skinner, he's been as advertised. We talked about, Bill, very efficient and the run game, and now another fumble there. The Bears got it, so same thing that happened to them a the couple series back in the third, second quarter. Now Josh Adams, uh, just a sophomore running back, who drops it on the first play from scrimmage in the third quarter. Antonio Jones, a junior out of Dallas Lincoln, played eight games a year ago. He's made a big play or two here tonight and a big one here. Talk about a momentum shift. Now he comes from the backside here and you get a, I didn't know if his offensive lineman jumped into Adam's way and knocks the ball loose. That's what happens. Goes right off of Burks on the left tackle. Knocks that ball loose and 
Ricky Jones get the ball coming up with it. All right, can Baylor take advantage of the turnover again? First and 10 at the 32. Griffin, it's the start here in the second half. He is brought down at the 30-yard line. Helmet goes flying. Hopefully he is okay. And our Baylor possession chart for the first half as Wake Forest, the veteran team, came out and pretty well dominated things. Punt, punt, interception, punt, and then turned it over on downs when they went for it on a fourth down. Then the TD after the turnover, and then finally the last series, they had to kick it away again. Well, they got to put all that behind, and they just got to execute now. Good field position, and got a little bit on first down there. Not a great play there, but you see Robert Griffin starting this third quarter. Looks to me like he brings that X factor to this football team. Explosiveness. Make something happen with his feet. Looks like he's a very accurate thrower as well. Complete Kendall Wright. Mm. Boy. Alfonso Smith, not only we've talked about the interceptions, but what a sure tackler in this whole football team defensively, Gary. And you've got a, certainly a lot of pride in seeing good defensive teams. They are sound. Yeah, they really are. Good job coming up there. But one of the things that happened on that play was the responsibility of number 71, Dan Gay, the right tackle, to, to go out there and make that block. He whiffed on Alfonso. When he did that, that opened up a chance for him to make that tackle come right up there. So when you run that isolation screen, you got to have your big lineman got to connect on those blocks. Griffin completes this one to Akers, and Akers has got the first down inside the 20 near the 18 as Chance McClinic, a senior on a Rome, Georgia, made the tackle. A little click here now. You got the offense rolling, throw it downhill to the big tight end, and then Robert Griffin, he can settle in back there. 12 yards in the pickup, and it'll be a first and 10. We talk a lot of basketball about first five minutes of the second half. You Football, bet. it's the same thing, isn't it? Where Wake Forest comes out, makes a miscue, and now Baylor's back in business if they oh get something, and they turn it over, and Wake will get it back. Oh, he just had that ball in there. Nobody even just took care of the football. Robert Griffin wanted to give the ball on the read, but the ball pops loose. His, I don't think his running back even had it. Is that Finley in there at tailback? And I don't think that he had the ball at all, Bill. And ball on the ground, Wake Forest comes up with it. Boo Robinson, I think, is the recoverer here. Let's take another look. And there's Finley. Finley. He doesn't have the football. He's just going forward. He thinks that Robert Griffin pulled the ball out. And when Boo Robinson puts 325 pounds on top of it, no one else is getting it. The junior out of Monroe, Louisiana. Start every game a year ago. The nose guard comes up with a recovery, and now Wake gets it back. So back-to-back -back turnovers here in the first two minutes of the third quarter. D.J. Bolden from Skinner. And wrestled down. The clock will continue to run. Let's check in with Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Bill. Talk to Art Bryles at halftime. He told me his team came out with no confidence, but he got a little confident towards the end of the first half. He hopes it carries over here in the second half. I asked him about the quarterback situation. He said Robert Griffin, perhaps all the way here, guys. All right, thank you, Jim. And Griffin, his first college football experience. I think the fans are excited about it. You know, you get a chance to see it. A young quarterback, perhaps a star in the making, somebody they can rely on at Baylor. And you know, they gave him a spark, yeah. and that's what they needed. You need a spark sometimes to do that, and you know, Wake Forest, their program has been built on you know, a little bit of basics of trying to build a Josh Adams develop that program with not young players, but making them established and keep it simple with Riley. Well, he's done everything, 75% completion in the first half, and defense score again. Well, we've seen Alfonso Smith doing what he does take care of the football. I think they've got the depth there. Offensive line, defensive line, they just roll guys through there. This is a quality football team the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. 20 to six Deacons with the ball. First and 10, 31 yard line of Wake Forest. And again, it is Josh Adams, the sophomore from Cary, North Carolina. Senior year in high school, 26 TDs and almost 3,000 yards rushing last year. The ACC Rookie of the Year had 100-yard games against Naval Academy, Vandy, ran for 140 against Florida State, and a huge win for Wake Forest. Decent numbers here tonight, uh, 10 opportunities, so trying to like break through there and get him a good rush. And Second and five at the 36. Rinfred in motion, split out wide to the top of your screen as Skinner steps up in the pocket. Somebody got a tug on him. He completes it to Adams anyway. 
He goes right into three defenders and tries to push forward for the first down and is very close at the 42-yard line. Yeah, Jason Lamb from the outside. He's going to get his right hand around the quarterback's neck. He's actually going to try to pull him down. Watch Jason Lamb from the left side. Going to reach out. Now, if he gets a horse collar tackle behind between the tackles, that's not a penalty in college football this year. Didn't, didn't, get a, didn't get a flag call there, but he gets the ball out to Josh Adams. It's a nice way, nice getting rid of the football by Skinner. And does get the first down. Bolden, ooh, hurdled a pair of defenders and then brought down after a short gain. Joe Pavelic there for the Baylor Bears. Yeah, nice read there by Pavelic, the middle linebacker, reading the misdirection play, and Bolden coming across and good tackle on the outside. A game coming up here on Sunday, no doubt about that. That'll be a good one in Mile High. Joel Myers, Dave Lapham, and the crew out preparing for that one. Always a Rocky Mountain showdown is quite a matchup. Second and eight. Third quarter, 10-09 and counting. Skinner for the Beacons. Good protection here. And delivers again to DJ Bolden. Antonio Jones makes the tackle at midfield. Going to be a third short coming up for Wake Forest. Well, if you can't get pressure on Riley Skinner, the offensive line doing a good job holding Baylor out. If you can't get pressure on that quarterback, he's just going to survey the defense. He's going to find the open receiver, and he does a nice job. It's also downhill. Third and two at midfield. Skinner. Under center, play clock at seven. And Pendergrass is knocked out of bounds. Just short of the first down is Antonio Jones making the tackle. Bill Land, Gary Reeds, and Jim Knox with you. Big 12 College Football Saturday, a special Thursday night edition in Waco where Baylor University hosting Wake Forest and trailing 20 to 6 here in the third quarter. Well, a good stand there by the Bear defense. Gets uh, Wake Forest in a punting situation. Joe Pavelic with the first contact there, and then the rally of the troops defensively, knocking them out of bounds and bringing up a punting situation here. Swank to punt at the 34-yard line. Unique punt formation. Everybody spread out. Good, huge splits. He had one punt for 43 yards in the first half. This one takes a Wake Forest roll, and Baylor will stay away from it. Great kick, outstanding coverage, and Baylor will operate in a hole at the four. When we come back, it is Wake Forest leading at 20 to six. This special edition of College Football Saturday is presented by Suzuki Quad Fair 08. Get the lowest financing of the year on Suzuki's full line of performance-driven ATVs. And brought to you in part by Bolero, the all-American gasoline for the great American highway. And the first down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% on brand name products every day. Overstock.com at home with the O. Baylor's offense takes over first and 10 from its first own four-yard line, line, its worst starting field position of the night. Neither team able to take advantage of fumble opportunities, but now the field position game in favor of Wake Forest, and they bring it out to about the 11-yard line, and Art Bryles had some comments about his outstanding freshman prospect, quarterback Robert Griffin. He's a very highly intelligent, very, very highly motivated, and very self-disciplined. So those qualities right there give him a chance to pass a lot of people along the road, you know, as far as success. And, and he's done that. So he's, he's driven, he's dedicated, and he's talented. And that, that's three pretty good ingredients to being a good, good athlete. Excellent ingredients, no doubt about that. Oh, no. Second and three and another loose football. <laughs> Wake saying they got it. They're trying to dig it out. You see Vaughn down there motioning. Shoot the senior out of Fairfax, Virginia. And you see Jordan Harvey down there thinking he's going to have a chance to get it, but no doubt about that. And Angel comes up with it. Wake Forest now knocking on the door around the 11 yard line. Ball mishandled inside again. Another inside run play. Baylor's put the ball on the ground here. Another one here. Finley doing the same thing. With Griffin, those two have got to iron that out. Two fumbles and two consecutive series by that tandem. 
That's something, Gary, that happens because you got three quarterbacks working with a, a new system and everybody still not in sync. Exactly right. You just got to have that feel, that confidence there. The running backs rotate. You got the quarterbacks rotate. It's just not consistent. And you just got to have that feel. That type of it is a play where it's read by the quarterback, whether he gives the ball or he pulls it. They're just not in tandem right now. Wake Forest has been a team that their 20 wins in the last two years. Turnovers have been a big part of their success. First of 10 here at the 11 of the Bears. And the handoff goes to Pendergrass. He's already got a touchdown here tonight. The turnover story, it's big in all of college for any level of football. Take a look at this. The last two years, 65 turnovers forced. And Wake Forest, one of four teams to pull that. Tonight, they forced three. That's pretty good stuff. You know, a lot of those are self-inflicted by Baylor, but yeah. nonetheless, they're going to get the benefit of those. Last year, Jim Grove's team, were they plus 17, 18, Bill? And they were plus nine last plus year. Nine. Baylor was minus 18. So, so those numbers play in the favor yeah. of the team that's going to get more balls in their hand. One team with three and nine. One team with nine and four. Guess which ones? Second and seven. Ball on the eight-yard line. They can get a first down inside the one. Skinner, great protection, delivers, and it is a touchdown. Demon Deacons, another TD pass into the end zone, and again, it is Chip Brinkman, his second score of the night. Yeah, just too much time for Roddy Skinner to stand back there and move up in the pocket comfortably. His receivers are continuing to work in the end zone to get that football, and Brinkman comes around. You see the protection here. Nobody getting in run in Scott, uh, Skinner's face, and he's just waiting for Brinkman to come open in the middle of the end zone. And Chris Buick in the cover just behind the receiver. Don't want to be in that position in the end zone. Swank for the PAT. You can count on him as Swank is 106 of 106 in his career coming in, and he's still perfect tonight. Skinner ain't bad. 27-6 Wake Forest. Welcome back, Big 12 College Football Saturday, a special Thursday night edition with Wake Forest leading it over Baylor 27-6. And Brinkman getting the second TD reception of the night. We have 7.36 to go in this third quarter. And Swank will kick it off here. And they fumble it again. And Lamar dives on it. That would have been disastrous had Wake Forest been able to pounce on that one. Their last score, thanks to another Baylor turnover just a moment ago. Yeah, Robert Griffin trying to put the ball in the belly of his tailback, not getting the match that they need. Ball turned over. Wake Forest takes control of it. And what do they do? Well, they set up Riley Skinner. Another nice easy throw to the back of the end zone to Chip Brinkman. Griffin stays on as the quarterback here for Baylor. Bears again try to get a little momentum in here. Just hang on to the football. Give that defense a little bit of a breather here. Our Suzuki scoring drive didn't take much. Two plays, 11 yards, and Brinkman from Skinner. And a TD with the PAT, and it's now 27 to 6. Yeah, they still got to be encouraged about, about Robert Griffin. I think the explosiveness that he brings to the field. And, and we talked about the Demon Deacons having a watch party back in Winston-Salem. Well, a little text message here from San Diego. There's 40 fans out there at a pub checking out their Baylor Bear, 40 alumni from, from Baylor, liking what they're seeing about this young quarterback. This one out of bounds as Baker, the receiving end. And Jeff and Lindsey running that party out there and wanting to see a little bit more of that throw in action. <laughs> Well, Wake Forest concerned. Jim Grope said, I know we're a favorite. We're a veteran team. We're happy with what we've got coming here because the season openers, he goes, they scare you to death. I don't care who you're coaching or what you're facing because you that unknown and particularly against the team that does have a new head coach and there's tough to to, to really know any yeah, tendencies know what, what they might happen. do. Yeah, there's going to be a whole lot of different ways that that team can go offensively, defensively. Come in, Ruben. Same time. Third down. Put in the third long situation here, going to allow that play to occur, and it's going to rely on that defense. Last year, Wake Forest 
their total offense 340 a game total defense 340 a game but they they play somewhat conservative offense but we told you the turnover story and then they rely on that defense and over the course of the game win the field position battle and a key player to it it turns the game you know, I, I played on a couple of Super Bowl championship teams that played that same style it's built parcels all the way i don't know if that's what the Coach Gerald would call himself, and you see the Demon Deacons just corralling Robert Griffin. They're getting through the bare offensive line. No, not a lot of protection there, but by their All-American candidate, Aaron Curry, at linebacker. That forces another punt situation. And that philosophy is a good way to win football games. Play good, solid defense. Don't be flashy offensively. You've got Riley Skinner, a very capable quarterback, very efficient. 75% completion in the first half, and just continue to pick up here in the second half. Good formula for success. Derek Epperson had the 58-yarder uh, to end the first half with a punt. It's this one off. And it's taken Smith right up the middle. Oh. And Smith did hard. A flag is thrown. He is brought down at the 42 of the Bears. Wake Forest in the field around the 45-yard line. 42-yard punt, 19-yard return. If it stands, don't think it is. Block is back, number 35. Here's the return. 10-yard penalty, first and 10. Yeah, but you see you bring Alfonso Smith back there as a punt return. This is the first year he's done that yeah. for Wake Forest, so happy to see him back to return of those. He does a pretty good job of running the football back. Another weapon for the Demon Deacons. They're up 27-6. It's the return of Pro Football Preview, and we've raised the bar for pregame shows with the addition of Sean Merriman as he joins Jay Glazer and Eddie George each week to give you the perspective only a current NFL player can give. Pro Football Preview returns next Friday at 11 p.m. Glad to have you with us tonight on this Thursday night edition of Saturday College Football, and it is in Waco where Wake Forest is pounding Baylor 27 to six, and the Demon Deacons getting the ball back after that punt. First and 10 at the 35 following the penalty. And the pitch, Williams. And he is brought out of bounds about the 39-yard line. First down markers brought to you by Overstock.com. Save time and fuel by shopping comfortably at home with Overstock.com. At home with the O. And Bill, you mentioned the, the NFL, and my heart goes out to Gene Upshaw's family. You know, tragic, uh, tragic loss of the NFL, and longtime leader of the NFL Player Association, man, that I got to, got to know very, very well over the years. A comment on that is Skinner here trying to escape the rush, and he does, still on his feet, and throws it away. Yeah, Gene Upshaw, Gary, you had the opportunity to work uh, side by side with Gene for, for some time, and. Uh, was such a fabric of the NFL game as a player and then a leader of the union and really helped lead things from kind of the dark ages of the NFL player relations situation yeah, to what the kind of money they're making now. He took over in 1983 leading the, our, our, the players union and I worked with the New York Giants as our player rep from 84 through 92 and I was on the executive committee with Gene leading that group when we get free agency established in 1993 so. He's going to leave a continuing legacy. I think it is tremendous and how the, the NFL sport has grown. And these young men in college football are seeing the benefits of that as they transcend perhaps some of them to this game on Sunday. But a tragic loss to my heart goes out to the family of Gene, the, uh, Gene Upshaw, his wife Terry, and their, their children. And I know everyone in the NFL PA, they're, they're all shocked by this. And uh, we're thinking of you guys. I'll certainly yeah, echo that. Thoughts and prayers to the family. That penalty was on Crawford, and now it is first and ten for Wake Forest. And on the ground, they keep it here as Pendergrass. Brandon Pendergrass out of Royal Palm Beach, Florida. And his first touchdown is a Demon Deacon earlier tonight. And kind of folks thought, all right, you got Adams. He was a rookie of the year in the ACC. What else do you need? And Jim Groves said, well, no, this guy's too tall. He's not going to sit. He said what's really great is Adams is welcoming you bet. him, giving him tips, helping him out. Well, that's a team concept. That's team football. You know, you got Adams helping him. You've got a great talent. And Pendergrass, they're both going to play. They're not worried about it. That's a, that's a good formula right there for this team. 
Second and six, Skinner completes this one to Brown. Escapes, got a little pick, and gets to the 45-yard line of the Baylor Bears before Jeremy Williams tackles him. Yeah, Dwayne Crawford does a nice job of coming off, trying to play off the block and make the tackle on the mound, but just can't get him on the, on the field. And then Josh Adams on the sideline, and a little fake inside here, toss it out there to the receiver, try to get a block there, missing the block there on the outside, and gets uh, four or five yards there. Third and four. 408 to go, third quarter. Third down and four. Wake Forest 27 6 leader over Baylor. 20 to 6 at a half and a touchdown here in the third quarter. And this one off the fingertips of Williams. A flag is thrown. We're going to have an offside on the defense here. Got into the neutral zone. A little hard count there by Riley Skinner. Using all the little weapons here, getting the Baylor defense in the in the neutral zone there. You'll see uh, center get over the football. That's Trey Bailey. And the right defensive ends want to jump in the neutral zone. First to ten at the 40. Out Skinner again, great protection. Going deep. This run is incomplete. Looking for Brinkman again. He's going, where's the flag? And Skinner's trying to work on the other end. Yeah, a little <laughs> hand check there by Dwayne Crawford running down the field. And good call there, I think, by the Well, no, they're going to throw the flag. There is a flag yeah, in the middle of the bigger field. Bigger part. Down around the 15-yard line. Maybe it's going to be a different penalty than contact. Many guys are out on the field. There's no foul on the play. Second down. A loose hanky. Yeah. Sometimes you find those out there. Wake Forest trying for a third consecutive winning season, assuming they take care of business here tonight. Their home opener a week from Saturday against Ole Miss. Also got Navy and Bandy non conference wise. This one is to Pendergrass, and Baylor pursues well this time, and a loss on the play. Trey Bryant, the junior out of Dallas, um, Richardson Berkner High School makes the stop. Yeah, when you can run like that as a big guy, number 97, Trey Bryant, getting off the block there inside and making a play on the perimeter of the defense. It's a defensive tackle. That's what you'd like to see from some athletic players in there. He and Vincent Rhodes kind of anchor the, the defensive front there for Baylor. Good getting him active here. Third and 13. Interesting to see the fatigue factor because there's no question that Wake is the much deeper team on a hot night here for the season opener. Mr. Baylor can withstand oh it on wide open. Can't withstand that. Wooster, touchdown, Demon Deacons. Skinner finds Wooster, 43 yards in the score. And I say, oh my, because when I looked down the field, there was nobody within 10 yards of Wooster, and Riley Skinner felt like, hey, this is, <laughs> this is easy. Pickens tosses it out there. To the weak side, there's nobody out there. Take a look at number 85 on the bottom of your screen here, and he's just going to get down behind the cornerback. That's Chris Buer, and nobody runs with him, folks. Check this out. You got the safety to the middle of the field, and ball waited a long time to get there, but Wooster nonetheless gets it in the end zone. Skinner gets his third touchdown pass of the night after the first two to Brinkman, and Swank for the point after knocks it straight through, and Wake Forest tacks on another seven. It is 33 to six. Wooster on the TD reception. Good job by Riley Skinner getting behind the defense and just taking the easy score. We'll be right back. Welcome back as you take a look at Wooster over there towing himself off, following the TD reception. 34 6 Wake Forest, Bill Land, Gary Regis, Jim Knox with you here in Waco. Swank will kick it off. And whistle dead Go. at the 25-yard line. Our Hampton in touchdown of the game. This look by Skinner to Rooster. Wow, he's not gonna find anybody more wide open than that. Put him to bed in the Hampton in. Yeah. You put him to sleep. Redshirt Jr. from Atlanta on the TD he had one TD. Last year, gets one here in the season opener. All smiles on that Wake Forest sideline. 3-0-4 to go in the third quarter. 
Robert Griffin came on after Kirby Freeman got the start. Wow. There's a spark here. Reception to Thomas White, a senior out of Plano, Texas, played at Plano West. White had eight TDs last year in the receiving game on 34 receptions. Josh Bush brought him down here. Interesting play design. I'm not sure if there were linemen downfield there because it looked like that Robert Griffin was behind the last scrimmage, but were there linemen downfield? This may be against uh, Wake Forest. They're trying to give the judgment here to the Bears. Nonetheless, play, look, play design was pretty good. Yeah. And no foul on the play. Those lips, it looked like he said, Put that flag in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Put it away, you would. Let it roll. No, let it roll. no foul, no danger. Let's move on. 34 yeah. 6. Jake Finley in the backfield here. On a first and 10. Griffin sets up, fires it, and complete to Geddes. Knocked down and out of bounds on the play near the 48 yard line. Alfonso Smith. Bill, do you think he's got an arm? Wow, well, that's not the problem, is it? No, it's not the problem. Take a look at this. He sets his feet back there. This is from one hash mark to the outside, about 15 yards down the field. That's a bullseye right there to David Geddes. Good job here by Geddes getting down the field, pushing the defender off, waiting for the football, knows he's got a strong arm quarterback. And a little more of that for our brows. So he'll like that. As a result, first and 10 at the 48-yard line, picked up 10, and moving the chains. It's time. Griffin hands it off and dancing through Jacoby Jones, who's got their only touchdown of the night. And I think you're seeing some defensive roll through here by Wake Forest, getting a lot of a lot of experience in there, trying to get some players through here to get them game ready. You know, you've been playing against yourselves entire spring ball and fall practice here, not able to hit anybody else. And for both teams, it's the first time we're going after what I call live ammunition. You guys actually really live tackling and. Kind of a unique situation. Might get a lot of players in the game to see the Bears react here, looking at the near sideline to get the play call. Second and five from the 47 for Griffin and the Baylor Bears. And Griffin shows his speed. And steps out of bounds as he comes across the 40. Got another first down. And Josh Bush covering on the play. Well, this is a pretty good disguise here by the defense. You know, you got Brian, excuse me, you've got Alfonso, excuse me, Curry on the outside here, Aaron Curry. He just runs full speed down the sideline, thinks he's got a tackle there on the inside, but guess what? He doesn't got the football. Aaron Curry committing from the outside, lined up on the wide receiver, and he's a good athlete, though, Bill. He's one of the better linebackers in the country, and he's got a he's got a future on Sundays. Fanville, North Carolina, Smith High School. Last minute pulled his name out of the NFL draft. Thought he would have gone in maybe the third or fourth round. Wanted to come back and be a part of the success that Wake enjoyed last year and expects to carry on through this year. Well, we talked to Coach Grobe about, uh, you know, dealing with success and dealing with highly recruited players and how do you keep guys in the program. And I really liked his response to us tell him, talking about, you know, why would you go in the third or fourth or fifth round of the National Football League when you can play your senior year and you could have great stats, you could have all conference, all, all these kinds of records that could be your legacy, and if you leave early and your success doesn't add up, it just doesn't make sense. I think that was a valid point. It's a good, point, a good, good uh, way to discuss that with his players. With the most out of the total college experience because you only get one shot at it. Speaking of Aaron Curry, here's what he offers for a scouting report. Scouting report on me is I hit hard, I run fast, and I'm passionate about the game. Last season, I was second team all ACC. This year, I'll be first team and all American. <laughs> no doubt about being an athlete. You're a little confidence, you got to have that. There's nothing wrong with that. Clock that, winding down here, so. That's a scary laugh if you're on the offensive side. <laughs> yeah, you got a big boy that can run and can make a tackle and hit you. I tell you, just like to strike a blow. They come out to measure on this play. Second and five, and also a Wake Forest player down is Curry being down. Let's take a look through what happens here. And just trailing the play here. Checks the quarterback and comes in, strips it, tries to strip, hangs on, just gets in the pile there. 
Maybe a hamstring tweak there, just kind of strain, maybe. Uh, I think he's going to be okay. That's good news. Get him up. They certainly want him for the rest of the campaign, and not going to keep him off the field too long. But he might be done tonight. I think Coach Grove says, "Hey, I got a pretty good, comfortable lead here. Star linebacker. Don't want to risk any further injury with that young man." Well, and you also you worry about the heat and the cramping and. Yeah, hydration we and both coaches concerned about that and trying to keep their players hydrated and here is Griffin on a first to ten. Oh, nice Ooh. play. Is that Wilbur? Kyle Wilbur cut through there to make that play. Redshirt freshman out of Florida, six foot two hundred and thirty pounder. Talking about getting off the block and that's what you do with it. Well, the Baylor Bears not enjoying it. The end of the third quarter, the score, Wake Forest 34, Baylor 6. They're watching a special edition on a Thursday night of Big 12 College Football Saturday, and it is presented by Suzuki. Welcome back, Big 12 College Football Saturday. Special Thursday night edition, the bridge over the Brazos River, not too far from us here at Floyd Casey Stadium. The Demon Deacons are taking the bridge to an opening victory, 34-6 as we start the fourth quarter. Griffin trying to bring it back and does, drills another one right down the middle to Kendall Wright, the freshman out of Pittsburgh, Texas. Wright's an all-state performer, also played basketball, was a quarterback in high school, defender, did a little bit of everything. Well, nothing wrong with this. You sit back there in the pocket, look at the receiver come into the zone between the safeties behind the linebackers, and had a chance to throw that in front of him. He might have run it into the end zone. 21 yards on the pickup. First down from the 13-yard line. The ball comes right at you there. He's got to keep his feet and ball thrown behind it. Aaron Curry back in the ball game for Wake Forest at his linebacker spot. Off goes inside to Jay Finley. And you know, at times, the Baylor running game hasn't looked too impressive tonight, but when you take a look at some of the stats. Yeah, they're, they're up there on top they, of the of Wake Forest. Yeah, they're at least winning that end of the battle. The, the turnovers have been huge. You see three to two, and Baylor took advantage of one of Wake Forest, and then Wake Forest getting a big one and a TD on a short drive in the third quarter. Get self-inflicted wounds there by Baylor, dropping the football, fumbles. Here's a nice throwing catch and recovered. Are they going to rule it a completion and a fumble and a recovery or an incompletion? I don't know if he's calling down or what. Now there's a new rule in college football. Have you ever he, had it, Gary? If he's considered, if he catches a football and he's called down and the ball is actually fumbled while it's in the act. This can actually be reviewed this year. This might be a little bit different because he can tone, he catches a football, he's called he's down, it. and the ball is out. This might be our first review of the year here watching this play, but I think that his knee is down, so this is going to be stopped. It's going to be a, a good call here. Chip Vaughn was the player defending on the play for Wake Forest. You know, they're going to re booth review on this one. Remember, in college football, every play is reviewed. Our officials, our booth is right next to us here in our announced position. I'm actually taking a look at these guys. They're taking a look at that, that play in there. Now they watch every single play, Bill, and they can they can play back and watch plays again. They can ask our, our producer in the truck to give them more different re reviews of that. I'm sure that's what's happening right now. Bob Steinfeld feeding them the angles that they need to make this make this judgment. But I think from what we saw, there was a catch. His knee was down. You see the, the booth there? Well, and you make the comment, too, is that some fans I don't think still understand like you're saying every play is reviewed if they need more time is when they stop the game yeah, you see the catch there and the knees down on the ground and you see the far official he's the one that comes in over here and he makes calls his knee down on the ground he's got the catch I think this is going to be Baylor's ball now if the ball was moving prior to him being touched down and the ball coming out that play in college football can be reviewed this year and it could be turned over even if he was called down, if the ball was moving prior to him going down, that could be reviewed this year and it could go over. It has to be an immediate a fumble and an immediate recovery by the opposing team, but that's not the case here. He's down, he's got the ball. This is not gonna be a fumble, it's gonna be Baylor's ball, should be at the one yard line. Giving him a number of angles from our truck and hopefully they'll make a determination quickly here. As, uh, and I think the other thing sometimes we, we tell people to remember is
to watch in sequence. They'll take a look at it from one angle and pick up something, and then they'll sequence it to another angle to complete their review. After the video review, the play stands is called on the field. So down by contact, he's there on the one yard line. That's what we saw. Well, the system working. People are wondering why are you why are you uh, reviewing a play? It's 34 to six here. The Baylor too. Well, Baylor's about to score. This is a yeah. What they call critical plays or opportunities to make a change in a football game. Let's face it, another touchdown. You never know what can happen. So uh, I think a good job of officiating, getting it right, making sure the play on the field is called uh, correctly. In this case, it certainly was. A drive, 10 plays, 75 yards, and sets him up first and goal from the one yard line. And Griffin takes it himself. Looking any closer, had linebacker contact over the top. Griffin looked like he scooted through there pretty good, maybe just a little bit short. No immediate call of a touchdown there by the, the line judge. Remember now the new 40-second clock coming into play here. It's down to 30 seconds. It started immediately as the, the ball was put down. Or the previous play ended, rather. And just inches from the goal line, and Griffin got Jones in there with him and he gives it to Jones. They whistle it dead though before he turns it into the end zone. Probably a procedure penalty. And I think we're gonna have some Baylor guys moving at the snap. Weren't set. Full start. Offense. Left side of the line. Some of those first game mistakes with a new team or new coaching staff and Players trying to adjust. And watch on the left side there. You got the guard pulling around there. And uh, moving a little quicker than he needed to. That hurts. Second down and goal from the six yard line now. Just outside the five, actually. They have three receivers set wide to the left. And Griffin with Sims beside him. Keeps the football. And there you go, touchdown. Robert Griffin shows you what speed can do as Griffin, the freshman signal caller from Copper's Cove, Texas, gets his first Baylor touchdown, and it's 34 to 12. Well, as they perfect this play for Baylor this season, I think you're gonna see a higher percentage of Robert Griffin pulling this ball down and doing just this because he's a dynamic player when he's out in space, and that was a nice, easy touchdown. Everyone's gonna come down and block down. You're gonna wash everything down. They're all running inside, and nobody's upstairs where Robert Griffin is. Griffin, the six-yard run for the TD, and the point-after attempt is good. And Parks takes care of business there, and it's now 34 to 13 as we take another look at a timeout. Board again. I want to remind you this week, College Football Saturday presented by Acura returns with a doubleheader. First, it's Oklahoma State taking on Washington State in Seattle, and then Washington battles 20th ranked Oregon in a Pac 10 showdown. Coverage begins with a college football kickoff show Saturday at 3 Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific in high definition. Yeah, got some Wake Forest fans in the house traveling here from Winston Salem or wherever they come from. Enjoying what they're seeing here by their football team. On Brown. This is Smith. Smith trying to turn the corner at the 40 and is knocked out of bounds as Lamar was there. And good field position for Wake Forest here with 12.32 to go in the ball game. Lonzo Smith returned to punts, kicks. He's already got an interception, his 15th of his career tonight. Well, I like that. I like getting your athletes on the field, giving yourself a chance to have an explosive kick return game. Let's face it, most time you try to win every phase of the game. You've got offense, defense, special teams, and I see Riley Skinner's numbers on the night. Pretty impressive once again. That again, 75% mark there, 24 for 32, and a couple of touchdowns. But I think that getting an Alfonso Smith or other athletes like him, you know, an opportune time to get the ball in his hands makes sense for a Jim Crow football team. Skinner has him first and 10 at the 45 yard line. Junior from Jacksonville, Florida, and he completes this pass and then a fumble out of bounds. It'll still be Wake possession as Josh Adams really lost it. Dominic Chris was covering on the play. Now they've thrown the ball to Josh Adams quite a bit tonight. They've actually thrown it to him out of the backfield. And remember early in the ballgame, they threw it to him on a 
on a play down in the end zone. They feel he's very got a very good soft hands, confident uh, receiver. He's just got to tuck that ball away. He's got to protect it more. He's got a defender coming around him. See that left hand put in there by the defender trying to knock that ball away. It's Jeremy Williams coming in, knocking in there. Number four, the free safety coming on down there. Skinner leveled this time after the fake to Pendergrass. Skinner's a guy that has led them to the promised land, and one of the things he appreciates is he is more involved than ever with developing what goes on on Saturday. They've incorporated me in a lot of the game planning. Um, they, they ask me what I like. They ask me what I don't like, what I feel will fit our offense best, what I'm seeing. And so that makes you feel good as a quarterback, knowing that they have that much trust in you for you to help orchestrate the game plan um, going into each week. And so I think that's going to be a big thing if we get on the same page. And you know, I, hope, I hope I make the right decisions when they ask me. Incomplete to Bolden here with a win tonight. Skinner will become the winningest quarterback in Wake Forest history as far as wins for a starting quarterback. He's got 18 career victories. And remember, just a junior, this guy is talk about really something. Yeah, making decisions. That was a good decision on that throw, an excellent throw. A couple of balls now. DJ Bolden's had the ball in his hands, not able to come down with him. And that was an excellent throw by Riley Skinner to the outside. Now brought in by the receiver. And so it's a fourth and nine in a punting situation. So Swank already kicked a couple of field goals tonight. He stands back on his 30. The kicking game is a really strength for Wake Forest. Competent punter there and Swank. Oh my. Flag is thrown as a bone crusher. And Darren Curry. Curry left it after a 35-yard punt. Bennett able to hang on. We'll take a break. White Force 34, Baylor 13. Who's the return of Bill? 34-13, the Demon Deacons over the Bears. Our Polaris ATV presents our toughest play of the game. See, he's waiting for a fair catch, and that's why the penalty by Curry. A pretty good shot there. I'm glad that he hops up all this. That's pretty good contact by a 250 pound linebacker rolling down the field, but it not protected. I think Curry saw the, the quick little hand movement there, but uh, certainly a penalty. ATV, Polaris ATV, toughest play of the game, and Bennett bounce right back up, give him credit. Curry, well, if you're going to get a penalty, <laughs> get your money's worth. That was some hit. Thankfully, everybody is all right. Remember, Curry went off a little bit ago. First down, the got, he got his best players on special teams. Griffin hit here as he pitches to Sims. And Sim steps out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Baylor with possession, down 34-13, and 11-27 remaining in the football game. Season opener for both. The Bears lost their entire Big 12 conference schedule last year. Griffin is coming out. Effort here tonight. You see 11-17. to And... 227 yards of offense for Baylor tonight. He's got a rifle. Yeah, get us the intended receiver there. Yeah. Throwing the ball right through his arms. And he's, got a, he's got a pretty good gun. See how this one is unfolded here tonight as Wake Forest swank a field goal and Brickman a TD to start things off at Pendergrass a score. And Kobe Jones got a TD for Baylor. Swank made it 20 to 6 at the half weight. And it's now 34 to 13. Mark Browns bringing a new system here, Bill. Offensively trying to do a little bit different than what the previous the previous group had done here. Guy Morris, Lee Hayes running it spread offensive system. This is a little bit, a little bit different than that. Incomplete. And as you bring a bring in a new head coach, you want to. He's looking to find what these players can do. And I think, I think uh, Art Browse is one of those coaches that's not necessarily going to try to put a, a square peg in a round hole. He's probably going to utilize the skills of his players and put them in positions where they can succeed. That's what a coach does. Put your players in a chance where they can succeed on the field. Probably blend some of the system to their, to their strengths. 
and then you know, try to win the recruiting game. And they are new for the pressure on Griffin that time on a third and five, makes it fourth and five from the 38 yard line. Low snap, Epperson handles it. Low kick. Everybody gets away, and it takes a Baylor bounce and roll down to near the 20 yard line. And that's where Wake Forest will take over, and we come back. Special edition of College Football Saturday. It's 34 13, Wake Forest. This special edition of College Football Saturday is presented by Suzuki. Quad Fair 2008 is here. Get the best deals and lowest financing of the year on Suzuki's full line of performance-driven ATVs. Visit your local dealer today. And brought to you in part by Whataburger, just like you like it. And by College Colors Day 2008, Friday, August 29th. Where your college colors wherever you are. Visit collegecoloursday.com. Welcome back here, Bill Land, Gary Reeses, Jim Knox with you on College Football Saturday, the special Thursday night edition. First and ten, ball on the 21 for Wake Forest. And Skinner hands the football off. Pendergrass breaks the tackle. Gets it out to about the 27-yard line before Jordan Lake makes the tackle here. Pretty balanced football team here for Jim Grove offensively. Doing a good job defensively. They play smart within themselves and they don't make mistakes. Be a contender again, I think, Bill, in the ACC. No doubt about that. He's got a very talented bunch. He's a very experienced bunch of football players. He's going to be proud of the effort that they put in, and he's going to continue to get better from here, they think. Skinner sees a second and four here. Right up the middle. Better drags. He scoots to near the 37 yard line. That'll move the chains as well as Wake Forest. Grinding it out, Leon Freeman, a senior out of Vero Beach, Florida, makes the tackle for the Baylor defense. The Bears have got Northwestern State next. Double-A opponent. Gary knows something about them. Old alma mater, Speaking the of demons. Another demons group comes in here. Yeah, and then uh, they'll host Washington State. That's another game that's part of our college football Saturday package on September 13th. They also have non-conference date at UConn of the Big East. So it's not an easy road for Art Bryles in his first season as the head coach of the Bears. Ball kept in the ground again by Pendergrass, and his totals are starting to add up. He's got a touchdown. They're only rushing TD tonight. Pendergrass. Tenth carry of the night. So looking at Baylor and what they've got coming up here. And you know, you're in the Big 12 South. You got Oklahoma in there. You got Texas. You got Texas A&M and Texas Tech. You know, all those you're going to play every single year. And you go to the other guys, the Big 12 North, and you got to deal with what's going on up there. That's pretty good football. Missouri, what about that football team? Yeah, you get half of the North each year, Missouri, Nebraska, and Iowa State this year for Baylor. Now, Wake Forest, we mentioned they're home next week. Got a lot of folks tonight we know out of BB and T Field in Winston-Salem enjoying this one. And the Deacon, Demon Deacons will be home next Saturday to host Ole Miss. And then at Florida State, right out of the chute in the ACC, and circle that date with Clemson, as Clemson is most everybody's pick to win it all. And of course, the Atlantic Division rival there for Jim Grove's club. And they get them in Winston-Salem this year. See the rest of the schedule. Already back-to-back -back victories against Florida State the last two years for Jim Grove, and yeah, like to get the trifecta, I'm sure. I mean, they get off to a big start here, and they'll take a lot of notice and zoom up the rankings. Pendergrass, Jitter bugs to the 45-yard line and gets across there. Curious Brian makes the tackle, and we'll make it a second down and seven. Just trying to get the run game going here, work on little things, you know, late in the ball game. How's your conditioning holding up as we take a look at Brandon Pendergrass's numbers? You know, a lot of touches, 13 touches, 37 yards. Decent little night there, you see the touchdown. So he and uh, Josh Adams, pretty good tandem back there. The guy is, I think, unselfish and going be a good fit here for Jim Grove. Well, and what an opportunity for Pendergrass where Wake Forest in control of the game, not needing to throw it, feeding it to Pendergrass, and Baylor swarms to get him for 
a little bit of a loss on that play. But great experience for the redshirt freshman out of Royal Palm Beach, Florida. And I think they really value Josh Adams. It looks to me like throwing the ball to him as well. Throwing to yeah. him out of the backfield and down the field. So probably going to see some packages evolve in the, in the future here for Wake Forest with both those young men on the field. And maybe get Josh Adams in a receiver position while you'll have Brandon Pendergrass in the tailback spot. Well, last year, Adams, you know, we ran for 953 and 12 scores. He also caught 34 passes and he had one TD through the air. So very versatile for Coach Jim Crow. Third and 10 from the 47. Skinner, Great not all coach. day. Now unloads to the safety and it's Pendergrass and he is short of the first down. It'll be fourth and short coming up. Stayed in bounds and Havlick and Pat making the tackle. Baylor linebacker duo. The clock under seven minutes. With Wake in control, 34 to 13. I'm going to punt the football away here, but uh, good job by Skinner again getting out of the pocket. Pretty good protection there. His offensive front just not picking it up on third down. It's been a very efficient night here for this team, though. I think that uh, people around the country may not have seen Riley Skinner are going to stand up and take notice of a young man who does a pretty good job running the show. Swank to kick it away, and again, Bennett, who got rocked last time when he called for the fair catch, the 5 775 pound senior. And a hit a middle there. Yes, and loose, and Wake Forest coming up with a football, and they're going to have it at the 11 yard line. Is that Dwayne Crawford, number one? The ball came off of him? Yep, I think so. My goodness. A rough night, just got a whole lot rougher. Well, he took one away and then he gave one back by the contact and just doesn't know where the football is. And that's just a problem that you have running down the field as a coverage guy. Just don't know where that ball is going to come down. He's thinking it's going to be uh, inside of him there. Dwayne Crawford on the outside. He's kind of looking at uh, what's going on inside and the ball just hits him. Pops off his thigh pad and the clinic there getting the football. Now Wake an opportunity to make it 40 to 13. They get it right back, and you know that Baylor defense is just dog tired. Yeah, right they now. gotta be gassed because they've been running the ball at them. That takes it out of you. And here's Hodges, the quarterback. He hands it off, and that's Pendergrass again. And Pendergrass takes it down inside the five yard line. Brett Hodges, the quarterback, junior out of Winter Springs, Florida. He threw for 359 yards last year, started two games. Skinner was injured and missed a couple with a shoulder injury. We look at his career numbers there. Not a lot of attempts, but understands this system. Pushed into action, something happened to Skinner. Jim Grove feels confident enough that uh, Brett Hodges could lead this team. Directed Adams with the ball carried the last possession and stays in the game with the backfield here and gets it and tugs it down near the three. Josh Adams coming back. You've seen kind of a lot, a lot of unbalanced formations by Blake Forrest here tonight, trying to utilize the kind of number of the defense on one side of the center or the other. Just different formations, different personnel groups. But I don't think the, the no huddle has really been a big big item tonight. You know, both no. teams have used it defensively, offensively. They both look at the sidelines and get their calls in. It's been fairly seamless. Third and goal at the four yard line now. Adams again the lone back. Hodges gives it to Adams. He'll scoot in for the TD. So Adams gets into the scorebook here with 438 remaining in this game. And Josh Adams, his first touchdown. Yeah, get a little reward. Brent, Brandon Pendergrass already has his touchdown on the on the night. And Josh Adams getting the benefit here of a good field position on the punt situation covered by Wake Forest and, and takes it into Peter. Replay, 10 yards, the TD after the mishap by Baylor. Swank with a point after, he stays perfect for his career. And Adams with a TD, Swank with a point after. And Wake Forest, another seven, it's 41 to 13. Welcome back. 
Thursday night version of college football Saturday as the Demon Deacons lead the Bears of Baylor 41 13 Wake Forest on top swank to kick it off. Jeremy Sanders a junior from Marlin Texas not far from your Waco is the deep man with 438 remaining. Swank it comes to Lamar takes it on the goal line brings it a 10 20 30 skips by a man and an outstanding return as he brings it out past the 40 yard line before he finally goes down. Yeah, kind of a lane assignment problem there by Wake Forest kicking his ball and Lamar, you see him running straight down to Hasbro. Nobody's gonna take care of him except the kicker comes in and that swing, get his feet, get his ankle and get him to the ground. 44 yard return for the senior from Bedford, Texas. And Freeman comes back to quarterback. Kirby Freeman was the starter, the Miami transfer, and had little success with his unit to start the ball game. And then Griffin came on, showed us a little something. And he come back with Freeman here with 427 to go, and he completes the pass to Major. You know, some uh, of the, the tackle made by Major, beg your pardon. Yeah, some of the times when you change quarterbacks, Bill, you know, you bring in Robert Griffin, who nobody knows anything about. He's an explosive player, dynamic. Sometimes it's good to get those guys in and out pretty quick. You know, I think I think Art Browse may may kind of reevaluate here, not necessarily to leave Robert Griffin in as long as he did this this uh, this ball game. When you get an experienced quarterback in there, you can do some different things, perhaps in the passing game or whatever whatever strong suit that they have, but and utilize those things. Jacoby Jones. And bumped around, brought down at midfield before he is stopped. First down marker tonight brought to you by Overstock.com. Shop with the company that supports college football. It's Overstock.com. You're at home with the O. Third and four. Third and four now for Freeman. We've got an empty formation here and looking at the sideline and reading it. Got a four down lineman rush and kind of got his own defense behind him. So three wides to the top one to the right and Freeman now flushed out of the pocket and has to throw it away here our Whataburger what a play is tonight Whataburger what a plays thanks to Riley Skinner and his performance now the play of Riley Skinner is what's really tremendous here is a good job of reading the defense throwing it in the end zone Chip Brinkman a couple of times it's just tight end of the action, Mr. Wooster. So tremendous night here for Riley Skinner. Three touchdowns on the evening and just a workmanlike performance. Led his high school, the Bulls school down in Jacksonville, Florida, to a state title. And a guy that was not heavily recruited until late. And what a find he has turned out to be for them. Flags all over the place on this play as Akers with a football and let him sort it out. 11 yards if it stands and we'll see. And Raleigh Skinner there on the sideline you know his story of getting to Wake Forest was kind of unique about being recruited there. Receiver, downfield offense number 72 the five yard penalty repeat fourth down. Number 72. Yeah they were really after John Russell a teammate yeah. of his and wanted him badly and really didn't have that much interest in Skinner but his high school coaches really pushing him and saying hey you need to see this guy he can play and he did, he got a late start in football as a quarterback when one of these kids had played at age five and on up and lo and behold it was like well if you want me to help you with this guy you need to you help take yourself to get this guy and what a find as really talk is. about the daily double for Jim Grove, yeah, Jim Grove <laughs> good, good on both of them John Russell uh, just a stalwart out there defensive tackle doing a nice job and then you got Riley Skinner at the helm running the show offensively so those two guys, the combo deal from Jacksonville, man, I think that's a pretty good find. Thanks well, for that, Coach, for continuing the yeah. push. And a uh, special note for those high school coaches that uh, really support and help push your you kids bet. when you really believe in them. Well, he's a heck of a quarterback. Baylor is in a league with, I think, as good a quarterbacks as there are in the country. Yes, up sir. And down the league got a lot of them in here. You have 10 true returning starters this year and uh, maybe 11th if you want to budge a bit. Take a look. Reesing at Kansas and took him to the Orange Bowl. Well, Josh on. Freeman, just a, a guy athlete. That, oh, tremendous. Chase Daniel, Heisman candidate. Smart, smart, smart. Gets away, gets rid of the football. Those three guys, tremendous players in their own right. First to 10 here for Freeman. We'll get back to that in a moment as he's showing some scrambling ability. And it is 
nearly picked off. Okay, there's a look at three. Now let's take a look. The guy who I can say is a fudge is Gans from Nebraska, who started a few games last year, had 15 TDs. And how about production. those two guys from Oklahoma? I tell you, what about explosiveness there? Zach Robinson, when he gets the ball in his hand, Sam Bradford, completion percentage, what he did last year, efficiency. Great quarterback play in this conference, no doubt. Roughing the quarterback was the call here. And we got some more. First down for Baylor, and we'll take a look at that play before we go back to our year of the quarterback in the Big 12. You see the flag there. And now it's first and 10 at 30 for Baylor with 234 remaining. And Freeman has Baker in motion. Keeps the football himself. Now, if you want to just get to the Texas quarterbacks, you got Colt McCoy, Stephen McGee, and Graham Harrell at Texas A&M and Tech, respectively. And I think the best thing about all of these guys, there aren't any coaches that'll trade their guy. You bet. They like I mean, them if all. You, if you could do it, they, they all say that I can win with this guy. Yeah. My guy. They all think they can win with him because they have confidence in him, and all these guys have shown that they have the ability to lead a team. They have they have explosive capability, both throwing the ball, a lot of them running the ball. It's going to be a great year of college football in the Big 12, primarily because he's quarterback. Well, Throwing thrown up for grabs and is picked off in the secondary that time as Fry. another interception. Fry gets this one. Remember, Smith had one early in the game, and now Fry comes up with the pick. Alex, six foot three, 193 pounder, a sophomore from Fayetteville, North Carolina, out of Jack Britt High School. Yeah, just playing center field back there. Gets into the end zone, and big number 21 says, hey, I'm open. He's got him, too. Maybe get us getting the contact there, making the tackle, but uh, ball probably not should have been, should not have been thrown. Bring it out to the 20-yard line. Oh, what about that guy on the left, Bill? He's got, he's got, <laughs> he's got it all going on. He's trying to bring a little color to the stadium. Baylor fans that are hanging in here. Keeping it on the ground, but how about this? Right up the middle and off to the races, down to the 40, the 35. And that's going to help the rushing stats, no doubt, for Wake Forest. Washington with the carry. And that just popped right through the left side of the line. Bingo. Hand off, let's go. Got a little counter action there. Gets inside the pulling guard around the backside, and that runs most of the defense, but pursuit here by the defense, and good smart play here, trying to strip the ball. It doesn't come out there. In the secondary, so 55 yard run for CJ Washington, a 5'8 freshman from Winston Salem, North Carolina. Cliff Odom tracking him down, throwing some pretty good speed. So you get a blowout game, you get into the contest. Your first carry is a college football player, 55 yards, coach. Think I get some more yeah, PT? I need, some, need some more reps here, coach, and he'll only go again right here. Yeah, they do. We're not done with the quarterbacks in the Big 12, Bill. You know, we talked about Robert Griffin, who we've seen here tonight, explosive capability. Cody Hawkins, just a sophomore, and getting more command of that Buffalo offense. And going to get started on Sunday night against Colorado State. Decided his first college start last season in that ball game. And Austin on all from Iowa State. They're winning big tonight in their opener. Second down and two, ball in the 17, and Wake Forest saying, no, nah, we're not just going to keep pouring it on. And uh, classy of Jim Grove. But at this point, take a knee and go home happy with a convincing 41 to 13 win. Well, it really has been a convincing win. They've very polished football team. The depth is there. I think if they continue to to make strides and do the things that the, the little things that they want to do. You know, they just don't do a whole lot. They, what they do, they do very, very well. And that's the mark of a good football team trying to pull together. They'll be a contender in the ACC, no doubt about that. And Baylor on this end, the debut of Art Browse, probably not what he'd have liked or hoped. Maybe had a Cinderella opportunity to win a football game. But I think he sees some th good things there, especially with Robert Griffin. Maybe the spark that he needs at quarterback. You need to get some defensive help as well. And for Wake Forest, as they start off the 08 campaign, ranked number 23 in the country and leading at 41, winning at 41-13. And Riley Skinner, you see with that note, the 18 career wins.
19 now, most in Wake Forest history. And Jim Knox trying to grab him down there for a few words for the record-setting quarterback out of Florida. Let's send it down to Jim. Go right ahead with Riley. All right, thank you, Bill. Riley, uh, a win. You're the all-time winningest quarterback of Wake Forest. What goes through your mind? Uh, it feels good. You know, this is a, exactly what we needed. We started off last year slow with uh, two losses, and I think it really set our team back. But coming out and getting a win tonight was uh, exactly what we wanted to do. We didn't care how we got it done, but just that we had a W at the end of the night. Yeah, you came out, and you came out on fire as well. Oh, no, no problem. Go ahead. I need to see the character in Riley Skinner and how he's about to handle those things. And steps in for the prayer. We'll send it back down to Jim Knox. He's got the head coach now. Coach, you got to be extremely pleased. You came down here on the road first game. Didn't really know what to expect, but you guys took care of business. Yeah, I'm very pleased. I thought our kids played really, really hard. Uh, they gave us some fits offensively, uh, some of the sets that we had to adjust to as the game went on. But it's a good start for us. I thought our kids played really hard. Talk about your quarterback, Riley Skinner, the job he did tonight. I thought he did a really nice job. Uh, he ran the offense extremely well. I thought he made some great plays. I, I loved the way he moved around in the pocket, kept some plays alive. Live. Thought he pulled the ball down and ran it when he should. Uh, we even ran a little option with him, so I was I was happy for him. I thought he played well. All right, congratulations again, Coach. Nice victory, Bill. Thank you, Jim. Hey, Gary, they were impressive. Baylor, there's some hope, but there's some work to do. Yeah, Alfonso, excuse me, Alfonso Smith from Wake Forest and also Aaron Curry. Good hope here on the defense. Some stars there. Riley Skinner on the offense with the weapons that he had, the tandem of running backs. It's going to be a great year for uh, Wake Forest in the ACC. I want to remind you to join us this weekend for college football Saturday. It all starts at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific with the kickoff show, followed by Oklahoma State versus Washington State. Then it'll be Washington versus Oregon. Sunday night, Rocky Mountain Showdown, Colorado State versus Colorado. Bill Land for Gary Reasons, Jim Knox saying so long from Waco. Wake wins it 41-13. Some of you will be going to the final score for watching a special edition of College Football.